Good morning and welcome to your Fort Worth City Council meeting. We have a special guest here today who's serving as our mayor for a day. Miss Savannah Whelan is to my left. She's a rising ninth grader at Southwest Christian School. And your job today is to welcome her with a round of applause, please. I'm gonna turn it over to Savannah with a gavel here and she's got a short script she's gonna read. Go for it, Savannah. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to your Fort Worth City Council meeting. Today is June 25th. I will call us to order and turn it back over to the city secretary. See, great job, Savannah. The floor is yours, thank you. Today's invocation will be by Pastor Joel Soar, so so oh, so so yes, sorry. I'm in a, in a rush, Suarez from the Paradox Church. Please rise, sorry. Please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledges of Allegiance. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, today is a, is a day that is busy. There's a lot on the agenda, and yet you are sovereign over it. You um, rule over it. So Lord, I pray for our leaders that are making decisions today. I pray for, I pray for clarity, that they would be clear on the decisions they have to make, that the speakers would have clarity in how to communicate. I pray for trust within each other as they walk forward and make decisions. And Lord, I pray for humility. I pray for humility with, within each other, within the people here, as we listen and hear and grow. And Lord, would you just be over them? Would you bless this, this, this city? the mayor, the, uh, the council members, and everybody else that is in this room. I ask you all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That is Our first item will be special presentations, with the first one being a presentation of proclamation for the late coach Robert Hughes. Thank you, Jeanette. And I know that our mayor pro tem, Gina Bivens, is going to read this very important proclamation. Before she does that, I did want to acknowledge we have two former mayors here today with us, both Mayor Betsy Price and Mayor Mike Moncrief. So great that you're both here today. that side of the dais than on this side today. Uh, but seriously, thank you both for taking the time to be here. Mayor Pro Tem, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And hello, Betsy and Mike. And it's a, for you to be standing, I hate that, but I know you're glad to see the chambers filled with live minds waiting to see how government works. Uh, before reading the proclamation, I need to ask, is there anyone from the family of Coach Hughes present? Good, that means I can do it from up here. I'm gonna read this proclamation, and you should know I will be taking the proclamation to the historic Baker Chapel funeral home so that they will have it for his service on Saturday at Broadway Baptist. It reads, whereas Robert L. Hughes was born on May 15th, 1928 in Bristow, Oklahoma. He grew up in Sepulpa, Oklahoma, where he cared for his mother and siblings and was the athlete of the family. And whereas Robert Hughes attended college as a student athlete at Texas Southern. Upon graduating, he lived a short professional basketball career with the Boston Celtics. He then began a career in the US Army where he was stationed in Japan. His next job would be at an aircraft parts plant. And whereas Coach Hughes began his coaching journey at I.M. Terrell High School, where his coaching legacy would begin. During his time at I.M. Terrell, his teams won nine district championships, three state championships, and one state runner-up title. And whereas after the closure of I.M. Terrell, 
Coach Hughes moved on to Wildcat Country, where I graduated from Dunbar High School as head basketball coach, where he would stay for 32 years. During his tenure at Dunbar, Coach Hughes won a total of 20 district championships, 19 bi-district championships, 10 regional championships, three state runner-up titles, and two state championships. And whereas, Coach Hughes retired in 2005 at the age of 76 as a member of the Texas Sports Hall of Fame, the National High School Hall of Fame, the, the Texas High School Basketball Hall of Fame again, the Southwestern Athletic Conference Hall of Fame, and the Texas Southern Hall of Fame. And whereas, as the winningest coach in the history of high school basketball for boys with 1,333 wins, Robert Hughes made his impact in the record books and in the hearts of everyone fortunate enough to work with or play for him. He leaves behind a legacy of love through his children, his teammates, his players, and the whole Fort Worth community. Now, therefore, the city of Fort Worth does hereby celebrate the life and legacy of Coach Robert L. Hughes. It is signed by the entire mayor and council and will be present at the coach's funeral service on Saturday. So hats off and celebration for the life of Coach Hughes. Next. Appreciate that. Um, I know all of us feel a sense of of grief for his passing, but also very thankful for his leadership for the city of Fort Worth and the many, many young people that he influenced over his career. Go ahead, Jeanette, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, next will be a, a presentation, a certificate of recognition to Sada Kanakoui, delegate for the Congress of Future Medical Leaders. Councilman Martinez. Of mayor and council, it is my distinct pleasure to recognize the following extraordinary young woman. Um, so Sara Sara Kavakoki is actually uh, happens to be a District 11 constituent. She is the daughter of Pilar Candia. Some people may know. Um, she used, uh, Pilar used to serve under Carlos Flores, and before then, his predecessor, the Honorable Sal Espino, and of course, uh, Mayor got to work with her while they were in uh, working in council sometimes. Um, so a little bit about Sada. Sada is a student at the International Leadership of Texas Grand Prairie High School. Thanks to her dedication and academic success, Sada has been nominated as a delegate for the Congress of Future Medical Leaders hosted on June 26th through June 28th at the University of Massachusetts, Lowell. This honor will open countless resources and opportunities for Sada. This certificate recognizes the hard work and determination displayed by Sada to reach this achievement. A little bit more about Sada. She's fluent in Spanish and actually learning Chinese. She is of Mexican and Japanese roots. So while I read this certificate of recognition, Mayor, would you join me? Mayor's signature is also on the certificate. And Carlos, would you join us for the picture as well? So this certificate of recognition, Office of Council District 11. The Office of Council District 11 is proud to recognize Sada Kanakoki on the distinct honor of being selected as a delegate for the Congress of Future Medical Leaders at the University of Massachusetts Lowell. The Congress is an honor-only program for high school students interested in the medical field. Sala was nominated as a delegate by Dr. Mario Capicci, winner of the Nobel Prize in Medicine and Science Director of the National Academy of Future Physicians and Medical Scientists. Sala's academic success, leadership potential, and determination to serve through medicine have showcased her potential to become this country's future in the medical field. I commend Sala for her dedication, drive, and commitment to service. She is representing her community exceptionally well. This certificate is presented to Sala Kanakoki in recognition of her nomination for the Congress of Future Medical Leaders on this 25th day of June 2024. Congratulations, right. Sala. <laughs> so Sala will say a few words. I wrote this, well, I wrote something so I could say to everyone, hello, good morning. I am so honored and grateful to receive this recognition. First of all, I would like to thank the mayor and all of our city council members for this opportunity to be recognized. I would also like to thank my mom for helping me and pushing me to achieve such great things. 
as well as my family and friends who are here with me today. I would also like to thank that I want this to be an encouragement for other kids who are here and listening that you can achieve anything you put your mind through and always push yourself to be the best that you can. Thank you. I would also like to thank that. So So, Sada, before you go sit down, I have to remind you, and Mayor Betsy can attest to this, this little girl grew up in City Hall because her mom worked for Council Member Flores. And don't y'all remember, those of you that were here, she would draw pictures on your whiteboard, especially if you had a contentious council meeting the next day, to try to make you think it was rainbows, or one, year, one time I had a hot air balloon. So it's just remarkable that she's standing here before us and headed off to do great things. So congratulations, Sada. Next will be a presentation of certificates of recognition to the Fort Worth Business Plan Competition winners. Councilmember Crane and Councilwoman Hill. Um, may I have Wright Publishing House, Jonathan Carradine, Style Smart, Shauna Murphy, Champion Strength and Conditioning, D. Henry, along with Hadley Warner, Kristen Martinez from Frost, and Robert Stearns join Councilman Crane and I at the mic. How's it going, D? Good, man. Mayor Parker. That good. This guy used to train me. He's mean, I'm telling you. <laughs> but he's very good at what he does. It's awesome to see you. Congratulations. Yeah, he, man, he's good. He's really good. Uh, Mayor and Council, thank you to all these small businesses for entering the Fort Worth, um, City of Fort Worth and Frost Business Plan Competition on May 9th. This was hosted by Frost. For the 13th year of this competition, 20 businesses completed six weeks of business development classes and received coaching from local business support organizations in writing a business plan. The top eight businesses move forward to make their final pitch for cash prizes, and our winners stand before you today. Congratulations go to Wright Publishing, located in District 7, who won the grand prize, the Pitch Perfect Award, and $10,000. Uh, so you're the recipient of a certificate of recognition. The Office of City Council District 7 is proud to recognize Wright Publishing House on winning first place at the 2024 City of Fort Worth Business Plan Competition for winning the Pitch Perfect Prize Audience Popular Vote. Wright Publishing House is a publishing company that offers end-to-end -end self publishing services, including editing, printing, and global distribution, focused on serving authors and the community more effectively and equitably. Through their business model focused on uh, positive publishing, practical printing, and purposeful programs, Wright Publishing is rapidly meeting the needs of authors in our community. As part of the Wright Publishing House Purposeful Programs, the Young Writers Lab allows for opportunities for investment in Fort Worth's youth. Through the Young Writers Lab, children go on a transformation, transformational journey in creative writing and learn how to be published authors. Wright Publishing House is creating opportunities and avenues for writers in our community and opening new ideas to the future authors of Fort Worth. Congratulations. <laughs> also from District 7 is Style Smart VA. They received the second prize in $6,000. The City of Fort Worth City Council District 7 is proud to recognize Style Smart VA for placing second in the 2024 City of Fort Worth Business Plan Competition. Style Smart VA is an online marketplace for beauty professionals where they can hire industry trained visual artists, uh, virtual artists, excuse me, tailored to the industry specific demands. Through these virtual assistants, beauty professionals around the United States are able to minimize administrative tasks and increase client retainment and acquisition allowing them to fully focus on their beauty services. 
with an average quarterly growth of 40 to 50% and an acquired client lifetime value of about $4,900, Style VA has seen tremendous results. As the need of the industry-trained virtual assistants rises, Style VA is looking towards expanding its services into other industries and a larger audience. Congratulations. And last but not least, come on up, Dean. Uh, already, you already got a great introduction from the mayor. I'll say this, that I was at the competition and saw all of the presentations. It was wonderful. Robert, thanks to you and your staff for putting that together. Um, it really was exciting to see how we're supporting entrepreneurs. You, can't, you got third place, $4,000. Um, you've done a lot of different things, but I'm proud of you of what you've done. And I'll read this really quickly. It says, uh, proud to recognize champion strength and conditioning for placing third in the 2024 City of Fort Worth Business Plan Competition. Champion strength and conditioning is a one-on-one -on -one private, per private personal training studio founded in 2021. Following a lifetime of passion for fitness, founder and owner D. Henry started champion strength and conditioning with the mission of providing the community with lasting, impactful fitness results in their lives. Champion Strength and Conditioning off, offers tailored fitness programs with preferred scheduling, uh, customized nutritional plans, and customized training focused on improving clients' health, wellness, and performance. With a 95% client retention rate, Champion Strength and Conditioning is showing results in an unmatched way, demonstrating their commitment to excellence and the effectiveness, effectiveness of their personalized pro approach. Congratulations, Dean. Thank you very much. Yeah, appreciate you. I don't know if anybody wants to speak. I also want to say thanks to Hadley and Krista for y'all's support. We couldn't do it without you. I think Robert would agree with that, that we need our sponsors uh, and to help us get that done. So thanks for what you're doing here. I don't know if anybody wants to have say anything. In the winners, any of y'all sponsors? I have something to say. <laughs> Hadley, if you will step to the microphone, tell me why does a local business icon like yourself get involved in this kind of competition? There are so many examples around this great city of successful businesses that all started with an idea, yeah. with an entrepreneur, to put a plan together. That's what this whole program is all about, to help them become successful, give them coaching, give them the tools that they need uh, to continue to build this city. So that's why we're involved. Well, this city is indebted to you and proud of you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Robert Stearns, thank you very much. This is the 13th year, correct? Yes. Your team does an amazing job. We really appreciate your leadership. Thank you, thank you. Our next presentation will be a certificate of completion for the Lanzer Fort Worth program. Councilmember Crane. Great, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Annette, Gilberto, why don't you bring the group down? This is a great day that we're talking about entrepreneurship and, and our continued efforts to support entrepreneurs proud of the Lanzar Group. It's a 10-week bi uh, bilingual education program about business skills, resource tools, and peer networks. Um, you, you've given me a lot of credit for, for this in, in a lot of different ways, but really it's you and Jasmine as it started, now Gilber Gilberto that's here, of, of putting this program together and really giving our entrepreneurs uh, in the community, of all parts of the community, um, the skills that they need to uh, move forward and build a business. And so. I would like to give you the floor to talk about this. They all have certificates already. There's 11 total, just so y'all know, that went through a 10-week program. Uh, they're not all here because they're working. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> but we're proud of you and I'd love to give you to introduce them and, and uh, talk about the program. Yeah, thank you, Council. So this is the program that um, started with the relationship that Mike Lund, uh, Councilman Crane introduced us to the National League of Cities. Um, we were providing funded 
uh, to be able to bring the Kauffman Foundation's Fast Track program, a national program and curriculum here to Fort Worth. We're the only organization currently offering it, but what we realized was that they actually offer the, the whole program in, in various languages. So we actually did our first class in Spanish last year, and this is our first English cohort, and we are starting now to uh, publicize the next Spanish cohort. So our long-term plan is to continue to offer these rotating English and in Spanish but it's intended to be for a small cohort of entrepreneurs, 10 to 15, to come together, learn as they're ideating or within their zero to, to two years mark, um, to be able to encourage each other, but also take in the information and work through um, with a facilitator and building their business plan. We're really, really quite proud, this being our first English cohort, um, of the bonds that this group created together. And as mentioned, some of their counterparts had to work today. Um, but Catherine Piña was our facilitator for our English cohort. Gilberto Ataide from our chamber staff led this. Would either of you all like to say just a few words about the cohort, how it went? Um, as a, uh, a small business champion, I'm also a SCORE mentor. I was with the SBDC during COVID. I'm very committed to our small business owners, and I realize there's a strong need for those who are up to 24 months to get education, to make sure they're set up correctly, so they can one day be a legalized business in the state of Texas, paying their sales taxes, and being profitable. So I was very fortunate to be part of this program, which is very uh, uh, specific to their needs, and affords them the opportunity for ongoing education and get those businesses started. So I'm very grateful to be part. Thank you, Catherine. So that rounds up our first year, and we move forward with our second year. I'd like to just take a moment to recognize behind me, we have Ana Vasquez, if you'd like to raise your hand, Maria Elena Barajas, Natalia Margarita Dominguez, and Eduardo Martinez. And not able to join us here today are Noemi Bernal, Perna Ramirez, Brenda Velasquez, Sandra Castaneda, Devin Jones. Um, and these, if you're curious about types of businesses, they span from hair salon, tree trimming, costume design, food trucks, art, uh, safety products. So a wide variety of businesses. And thank you so much um, again for the opportunity. And we look forward to continuing to grow. Did you want to say something? Sure, absolutely. Work, please. Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you can see me. <laughs> I'm right here. So it's been a wonderful opportunity. Like Annette was saying, it went from uh, ideation. They provided us with a framework to be able to put all of our ideas down, but also look at the business perspective of it. So week after week, they would show up for us in person and then also virtually. It was an asynchronous experience as well for those of us that work full time or are going to school full time. And they really helped us in navigating building our business plan, but then also providing a business pitch at the end. So there's a pathway to continue growing. And Catherine did an amazing job of facilitating that for us. And Gilberto was definitely our cheerleader helping us with technical things and also providing a network for us to continue to grow as we are navigating our entrepreneurship journey. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. 10-week yeah. program. They went to the class every Tuesday for two hours in the evening after getting off work. So they committed from six to about eight um, in their personal time. So we're really grateful for them. And a shout out also to Style VA, which was a finalist in the business plan competition because they actually were a finalist in our business pitch competition last year. So we're hoping some of these folks, you'll see them next year in the business plan competition as we're all working together as a city to uplift entrepreneurship. Thank you guys. Thank you. Okay, folks, get, get more energy for this next group. Councilman Nettles, this presentation of Certificate of Recognition is to the Next Level Cosmo Camp, and I know that you're excited to give this presentation. Yes, I am, and I'm gonna ask uh, before they, uh, Cece, they, the two can come and uh, set up 
what they need to set up. And while they're coming doing that, uh, I do want to acknowledge we have a couple of other campers here. I did let uh, City Tech Secretary know. Uh, one, want to acknowledge that we have the Southside Community uh, Camp as well here. So if you're here from the Southside, y'all kind of stand up so everybody can see you. Southside Community. You guys for coming out. Uh, also, we have another camp, Purpose Driven. I'm going to ask uh, them to come down so they can get a photo with you, Mayor. Uh, Purpose Driven Summer Camp is here as well. If you guys will make your way down here real quick so we can get a photo as uh, CC, uh, Cosmo Camp sets up. Let's move expeditiously, please. <laughs> That's the preacher voice in me. I think they're asleep. Give them a yeah, yeah. They're young people, so some of them are yawning. But they're really excited to be here. This is their education um, part of their summer camp. And so this is not a swim day. This is an education day. So they're kind of nodding. And then I'm going to come down and give the presentation for Cosmo Camp. All righty, and so we're going to have the next the next level Cosmo Camp kids to come up. So one of the things that those of you that don't come to council often, uh, Mayor Pro Tem has been very um, uh, vital in making this happen, that we want to bring young people down to city government and see how city hall actually operates. And so over the different months and years, we have had uh, high schoolers come, and I think we're getting younger and younger, but it's very important to us that we raise up a new generation, which is our young people. And so today, you see a lot of young people here today just hear about civic engagement. So don't be alarmed. It's all good. And, and so we're trying to educate them. And so we have, are they going to start on this? Uh, yeah, we'll do the Okay. Well, while I'm reading this, I'm, if they can go ahead and start on that so we can operate efficiently. So yeah. Okay. Okay. I want to show y'all what Zach did. The lady towards the most of you know is Zach Zelda. Can you step forward? So, the during the process, they have created a, a, a photo here, and they're going to uh, reveal those as I'm reading this, rec this certificate of recognition. Fort Worth Certificate of Recognition Office of the Council of District Number 8. The Office of City Council District is proud to recognize Next Level Cosmo Camp for kids in dedication to teaching Cosmo, makeup, skin care, nail hygiene, mental health, youth empowerment, safety, and life skills with a focus on entrepreneurship and cosmetology. The Next Level Cosmetology Camp began a summer camp on the east side of Fort Worth, Texas on June 13, 2022 with 30 girls. The students uh, of the world uh, finally put uh, together a hair show showcasing their skills in cosmetology and business before their parents, peers, and community. These students took on roles as models, makeup artists, hairstylists, and ticket promoters. Two, five girls also are now pursuing in fashion 
the cosmetology, and many more will follow. Over the span of two years, the Next Level Cosmo Camp for Kids has hosted a fall camp, a summer camp, and even introduced a life-changing program at 12 Forward ISD schools. This is one of the uh, campers that participated in District 8 as well as in Michael Crane's district and planning to participate in District 6. Under the leadership of Shakina Watkins, C.C. the Great is the only of short of two years Next Level Cosmo Camp Kids has impacted the lives of 450 kids. I commend CC. Um, and this certificate is presented to the Next Level Cosmo Camp for Kids in recognition of their commitment and success for our Fort Worth youth on this 25th day of June 2024. I'll try to make it quick because I know y'all got a lot to do. Um, council members, Councilman Nettles, I'm about to cry. I appreciate all of y'all. Every single person up there just about has helped Next Level Cosmetology Camp for Kids in some way. And Councilman Nettles, you have put your locks on the line for us, life on the line for us. Um, we are now in 12 schools in Fort Worth ISD and counting. Thanks to uh, Council Member Jerry Williams, we will be in the Fort Worth Public Libraries now. There is no program out here like it. We build bosses over here. We don't just teach cosmetology. We teach financial literacy, mental health, self-awareness. We teach a real, well-rounded human being. I want to thank you, Councilwoman Elizabeth Beck, Mayor Maddie Parker. I love the way you wink your eye. Uh, but I just appreciate y'all, and to my friend and council member, I appreciate what you do. Ladies, rip up the room when we say this. We got beauty. We got race. We know business. Next level Cosmo Camp. We got and we stand up. Period. All right, we're gonna take a photo. And then the other Jared back. Anybody that participated, you welcome all of to come. Mayor Parker, uh, just a moment of privilege. I want to, I think it's, I'm trying to locate them right now. I've been told that the Diamond Hill Summer Camp folks are here. There they are, right back there. Roll, good to see you. So just want to give a shout out to them. Thank you for being here. Mayor, I'd also like to take a, a quick point of privilege to recognize the Como Community Center Summer Camp. Um, where are y'all? Please stand up. Thank y'all so much for joining us. Um, and so excited um, that y'all are having a blast at summer camp and hope to see y'all at the uh, community center sometime soon. My remarks were more than the desire to get my hair braided. What I want people to think about is when you see children engage with goal setting, making money, which means working, I submit to you, years in the future, we will see a decline 
in juvenile crime rates. Mm -hmm. And so just the idea of having a goal presented that they embrace, they create, I'm encouraged to see this. Those are my remarks. Next will be items to be withdrawn from the consent agenda. Thank you. We have one item to withdraw from the consent agenda. That's MNC 24-0548. Any items to be, to be continued or withdrawn by staff? There are no items to be continued or withdrawn by staff. Mayor, that gets us to the consent agenda speakers, and I believe we have eight of them. Thank you very much, Jeanette. Our first speaker is Lee Haynes, followed by Sharon Swaggerty. Oh, sorry, it's Lee Haynes Taylor. My apologies, Ms. Taylor. And Mary, I believe she has a You have a group, is that correct? If you're here with Ms. Taylor, could you just raise your hand for me? Thank you all very much for being here. Ms. Taylor, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. I appreciate you having me. I think the mic's not on, if we could fix that. Just a second, Ms. Taylor. have to bring it way down. Is That's, that okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Can y'all all see me? Yes. Okay. My name is Lee Haynes Taylor. I'm the current president of Texas Garden Clubs, whose headquarters building is located at 3111 Old Garden Road on the breathtaking campus of the Fort Worth Botanic Gardens. And I have a prepared statement. Thank you for allowing me to speak to you today as a representative of 8,000 plus members of Texas Garden Clubs. The Botanic Gardens and the Texas Garden Clubs headquarters are the oldest park and headquarters in America. Texas Garden Clubs was formed in 1929 and the headquarters was constructed in 1959 on acreage donated by the city of Fort Worth. We have enjoyed 65 years of existence in the Botanic Gardens working closely with the Park and Recreation Department all these years, and we hope to continue uninterrupted for many more years to come. The Fort Worth City Attorney is present at this meeting to request members of the Fort Worth City Council to allow permission to file suit against Texas Garden Clubs to force taking our headquarters and land. Texas Garden Clubs is a nonprofit organization of 8,000 plus members. We do not want our property taken away from us. The governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, also agrees with our sentiments. Texas Garden Clubs is an asset to the state of Texas, the city of Fort Worth, and its citizens. Our mission statement, Texas Garden Clubs promotes the love of gardening, floral design, horticulture, civic responsibilities, landscaping, environmental concerns, and garden therapy for men, women, and children, and encourages participation and support of educational programs for both the very young and the most advanced students. It is the purpose of the organization to preserve, protect, and conserve the natural resources of this country and to maintain and enhance the beauty of our land. The city of Fort Worth has, as our strong ally, helped us to secure our headquarters. The city of Fort Worth gave us a deed and land in the Fort Worth Botanic Gardens from the White Survey, donated to the city in prior years. In 1959, when Texas Garden Clubs wanted to receive a loan from the Continental Bank, the bank required a survey and a clear deed. Let's see. The city of Fort Worth, a, a deed of the land that the city of Fort Worth had given to Texas Garden Clubs. The city surveyed the land 
given to Texas Garden Clubs and a new deed was filed in order for Texas Garden Clubs to get a loan using the land in its headquarters building as collateral. The city of Fort Worth helped us to get our headquarters. Why then would they want to take it away? Surely they would not have paid for a new survey and clear deed if they had not wanted this to happen. When council members read the document, you will see how the city helped us in the past. The city created the document saying the park board could sign. And I have passed out packets for each of you that have a lot of information pertaining to headquarters. There's minutes of the parks board commissioners dated May 15th, 1958, August 20, 1958, September 19th, 1958, August 26, 1959, which referenced the building site for our headquarters. Also included is information about our headquarters that should be of interest to you in re relating to headquarters as to why our legacy is so important to the members of Texas Garden Clubs. We hope the city of Fort Worth council members do vote no, that Texas Garden Clubs can keep the headquarters and gardens located at 3111 Old Garden Road for its members. Our headquarters is both a tribute to those who have gone before us and a version of what we want to bequeath to all those who follow us. We want this relationship to continue as in the past as our legacy. Again, thank you for your consideration and your time. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Ms. Swaggerty. Thank you for offering me the time to speak this morning. I just have a few questions, I guess. This ongoing dispute with the city has been going on with ten, for almost 10 years with the um, Garden Club Council. I've been to the uh, Fort Worth Botanic Gardens on many occasions, and there is a definite parking issue there. And I'm just wondering if this lawsuit is going to address and resolve the parking issue that is ongoing. I have been there when we had Butterfly in the conservatory, when we've had Flowercade from the garden show, and I've ridden the bus because we had to park way over in parking lot D. And there were several people on the bus that they wouldn't come back because they couldn't park closer to the actual building because it's a timed entry. So I'm hopeful that you guys can resolve this to both sides and we can once again have the people that come to the gardens be able to park closer. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Swaggerty. Council, before we continue, this is the last of our speakers on this item that's pertaining to the Texas Garden Clubs. I was going to ask our Assistant City Manager, Jess McEachern, to, to give a few comments of clarification on this item. Good morning, Mayor and Council. We certainly agree that Texas Garden Club has a tremendous legacy here, both for the state and for the city of Fort Worth. So filing of this lawsuit does not preclude us from being able to resolve this in a manner um, notwithstanding, and we will continue our efforts to do that. Thank you, Jess. I appreciate that. And Ms. Taylor, I know that I cold called you one day and had a short conversation with you at home, and that is our intention to absolutely continue to work with, with you and your members, um, not only to protect your legacy there in the Botanic Gardens, but also enhance your experience and be an inter integral part of the future we have in the Botanic Gardens. So we'll stay in very close contact, and you're in good hands with Jess and her team that that is our intention. So thank you all for being here today. We really do appreciate you. Our next speaker is Gerald Banks Sr., followed by Lisa DeBrito. Gerald Banks Sr., District 5. I proclaim the need to 
clean up the police department, sheriff's department, city hall, and the city of Fort Worth completely from corruption. Clean. Clean the parking lots from the bottom of the dirty bottom to the top of the buildings that actually it's because it's been a lot of blood spilled on these parking lots and in the same and some of these buildings. I'm undecided on how much it would cost, but it is very much needed. My last few minutes will be de dedicated to the victims. No justice, no peace. Mr. Banks, I want to be respectful of your demonstration. Are those the conclusion of your remarks? No, it's not. Okay. If you want to continue speaking, that's fine. Otherwise, I need to move to the next speaker. I have a, a minute and 12, 11. We'd love to hear 10. your remarks, I'm, yes, I'm sir. I'm continuing to speak. Okay. Six, five, four, three, two, one minute left, 59, 58. 57, five, four, three, two, one, 49, 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43, 42, 41, 40 seconds left. This demonstration is for the blood that's been spilled on these parking lots that need to be cleaned up inside these buildings and you know what buildings. 27, 26, 25, I'm continuing to speak for the victims that has lost their lives. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, and if you continue to count, you'll see it's 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. I appreciate you listening. Our next speaker is Lisa DeBrito. Lisa will be followed by Adrian Smith. So I'm speaking against agenda item 24-0593. To summarize it, it is a $3,000 appropriation to go to selective, keyword there people, devils learn the details, traffic enforcement, program operation slow down grant. Now I'm gonna give you three reasons why I'm against this proposal. The first reason is our crime statistics, specifically the east side. But just for demonstration purposes, before I be continue with this, I wanna show you something. Understand this is demonstration only. And I'm addressing the audience now. Why? Ms. DeBrito, you can't address the audience. I apologize. That you have to address the council. That was a demonstration. <clears throat> and the reason it was a demonstration is that what your, that is what your east siders feel like. That's what District 5 feels like. When I call the police, it takes up to two hours to get a response for dangerous crimes. And let's talk about those, because this is one of the reasons I oppose just a small amount of the money that's going for boondoggles, as far as I'm concerned. Odds of being a victim of violent crime, especially on the east side, one in 201 people. That is the FBI statistics. I'm quoting directly from that. Assault in Fort Worth, 356.8. National average, 282.7. Murder, 10.5. National average, 6.1. Rape, 62.3. National average, 40.7. Every 18 minutes in this city, especially on the east side, every 18 minutes there is a violent crime. 
and you want to put more money into traffic? Are you kidding me? Now, let me go to the next reason I'm here. The gentleman that just spoke is right. Number one, David Colley. Number two, a Tatiana Jefferson. And now, number three, Carolina Rodriguez. The city has blood on its hands. I stood before the mayor sitting behind me now, the former mayor, and asked her to appoint an independent citizen-led committee to investigate what happened with the Tatiana Jefferson, whose blood was not spilled on these streets. It was spilled in her own home in front of her seven-year-old nephew. I have a report here from the DOJ, which Fort, Fed Up Fort Worth paid $3,000 in FOIA fees for, that lists officers who have had disciplinary action. I really would like to do a deep dive into how many of those officers are still on the force. Thank you. Our next speaker is Adrian Smith, followed by Mike C. Adrian Smith, I am one with the people. First, I would like to begin by saying to the three firefighters injured on yesterday, my heart is with you. May your recovery, recovery be 100%. Get back to us, the city needs you. Uh, I begin with MMC 24-0538. Once again, the city is readying itself for court litigation because it didn't give because it didn't because it didn't get its way in a private set settlement matter that's now public is the party that's being sued in the wrong or is it the city city's desire to for control of spaces it doesn't have legal right to so we know that um you all find us finding yourself in uh, litigation again i heard some speakers on this as i stood in a uh breezeway this particular um, group, um, the Texas Garden Club, 64 years, they've, they've been here in this city. And now you all about to spend millions of dollars, taxpayer money, fighting something that, you know, just, you could have just let be. But, you know, with this new council, this new top-down council, you all think you know everything. So, and it doesn't apply to all of you all. Like I stated, I don't, I don't, I don't lump you all up the same. But when I speak, I just speak, speak general. So, if the shoe fits, wear it. Uh, MMC zero five uh, three nine. Now, regarding mineral rights of the city, what happened? What happened to the mineral rights of compensation promises that many residents of this city agreed to in good faith with various gas leasing companies that the city gave authorization and rights of exploration too. And I think this happened under uh, our former mayor, uh, Ms. Bessie Price. And I only say that because, Mayor, one thing you've stated publicly, a lot of, a lot of things have happened before you, you all's time, but you were chief of staff for Ms. Bessie Price for five years, so this falls under your watch as well. And my last uh, item, 0553, truly, when it comes to the homeless plight of this city, we know that individuals are good for putting on a facade, dog and pony show. The typical, while the cameras are rolling, they are acting. It's amazing that we have $30 million plus available for general litigation purposes against the city, but those organizations serving our most vulnerable are made to split funding when it comes to initiatives set out by them. And this is uh, in relation to MMC, 24-0553 for those who are interested in knowing what's going on. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mike C., followed by Carolina Rodriguez. Mr. C.? Mike, are you, can you hear me? Mr. 
let's let's talk about art. Yes, go ahead, please. Let's talk about art. This is Mike C. Let's talk about art and racism. When Kimby Wiley Judith was featured at the Modern and the Kimball, it disturbed many. The piece depicts a black woman with a beheaded white woman and it held in her hand. This is not art. It's an antagonism and it's racism. Art today, as much of our society, has evolved. I'll move on now. As I travel around Fort Worth, I see too many art installations that do not capture the essence of Fort Worth, this cow town of ours. One such poor example I saw looks to, looks to be a steel galvanized utility pole with a trash can cocked on top. It's not art. It's trash. It's a trash can on a utility pole. And we probably paid 100 k for it. The two, the, the two artists you intend to fund based on their view of their work most likely will be overpaid and based on their work, I don't believe they will capture the essence of Fort Worth. Alice Eggert's art consists of pro-abortion message, neon lights, shine art, clothes, rock, rocks, trash, and lint. Letitia uh, R. Bajayo, upon my, uh, upon my review, her art is just too abstract. I just don't see it as, as a match for Fort Worth overall. We are talking about nearly half a million dollars for two roundabouts. Can, can we use this money more responsibly? Lastly, Councilman Williams, have you reviewed these plans for these two art installations? Do they capture the essence of Fort Worth, or is it abstract art? Can you answer? Councilman Williams? Mr. C, you still have about 40 seconds left. There won't be a response from the dais. All right, thank you. That's all I have. Our next speaker is Carolina Rodriguez. Is Ms. Rodriguez here? Okay, Mr. Mata is our next speaker. My name is uh, Manuel Mata. I live in District 9 and uh, I have a problem with uh, lawsuits um, where people get hurt by police officers. And uh, I would like y'all to notice a certain police officer because y'all didn't name him or they didn't name him. I know who he is personally because he pulled a gun on me for crossing the street on 7th Street. I just got that case dismissed and he's not de-escalating, he's escalating. And I don't want y'all to wait until he kills somebody for y'all to step in and put him in a desk or give him paid suspension, right? Because that would be the least that we're asking. Now she doesn't even wanna come in here. And that's crazy for filming. And right here, I have this. And this was done in 2022 where it identifies auditors is what she is. So they've known how to do it. They've had case laws and none of this states that they have the ability to grab a woman and throw her on the ground, split her head open, her eye and her lip. Nowhere does that in any policy because any force that's unnecessary is excessive. Now I'm asking y'all because I personally destroyed a, a wall that was in my neighborhood because we allowed a police officer buddy to come in there and show us his heart. And what this officer did, the one that I took down, he built five. So now it's harder for us to listen to what they're talking about. And it only addresses one problem. Are y'all gonna address this? Or are y'all gonna agree with what he did? Because that's all I'm asking. Look, Mr. Nettles, I appreciate what you asked for, 
because we do need to see that body cam footage, right? Because if an officer has the idea in his head that he can run around and grab everybody because this policy, this class that they took doesn't state that. And I've read it. And they're mad at me because I understand it specifically. And all I'm doing is showing everyone else what I said five years ago. Y'all need to control these people because the next one is not going to be up here to be able to be in the, out there or nowhere. You're going to make funeral ranges for them. He's a problem. He doesn't understand de-escalation. Council, that's the last of our speakers on the consent agenda. We can move on to vote on the consent agenda. I can entertain a motion. Thank you. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? Any other outbursts from the audience? I have to have you removed from the council chamber. No, you're not on the list, Mr. Willoughby. Please vote, council. No speaking from the audience. You can remove Mr. Willoughby. Thank you. Motion carries, ma'am. <laughs> Marshals, if you can remove individuals that have outbursts from the audience, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Our next item will be MNC 24-0548. Can entertain a motion, council? Yeah, Mayor, I asked this to be pulled just because I knew uh, Mr. Hunt would be in the audience. Lee, raise your hand here. I got a call a couple weeks ago or an email from Deanna Giordano, the HR director, and I was surprised because she wanted to take my CCPD representative and move him to over to the Firefighters and Police Civil Service Commission. But totally in line with uh, Lee's a great guy. I just want to point out intellectual property attorney with Kelly Hart. He's an adjunct professor with the University of Houston School of Law as well as Texas A&M. He was a Houston police officer for eight years. Uh, and went to night school to get his law degree. He worked at the Department of Commerce. He's got a Bachelor of Science from Texas State University, Master's of Public Administration uh, from the Bush School, and a JD from the University of Houston. So very qualified. Thanks, Lee, for your willingness to serve. I appreciate you being here today. And with that, I'll move to approve. Motion is second. Please vote. Marshals, I've got several removals that need to take place. This gentleman that's filming in the back needs to go. Mr. Banks, you have to go. If you, unless you can sit down, that would be great. We've got a lot of agenda items to get through. We appreciate your concerns, but there's a lot for us for the council to do today. Thank you. You can leave. Yep. Yep. You're not the media. Thank you very much. Yep. I've been called worse. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Please. I think we have a vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Next will be announcements by city council members uh, involving upcoming and recent events, recognition of citizens, or approval of ceremonial travel if needed. First up is Councilmember Flores. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Mike, over here we have the first... Thing. Unfortunately, our Dallas Mavericks did not make the cut, but we still celebrated them there at the Fort Worth Stockyards with the Dallas Mavs crate drop. Mayor uh, Parker was there along with I to support the home team. Next slide, please. All right, on June 13th, uh, the District 2 had an open house, and that was a big success. Uh, that format is very effective. We had a lot of city staff there, a lot of resources from the city, and opened it up for the community to come in there on their own time during that time and uh, appreciate the participation from the many uh, staffers and departments. Next slide, please. All right, let's have a, a, a nice shout out moment for the uh, water utility of the city of Fort Worth. Uh, attended the General Assembly of the North Central Texas Council of Governments. Uh, Council Member Crane popped in as well. And uh, they were recognized. Chris Harder was there present as well. And they were bestowed the Regional Community Award uh, for collaborations with the city of Hudson Oaks and Willow Springs. So congratulations to Chris and his team. Next slide, please. All right, the end of watch, which uh, travels throughout uh, the country, uh, supporting uh, those family members that experience a loss 
of their family members who serve in uh, law enforcement. I joined Councilmember Blaylock and those family members there at the North Division to honor uh, the late Sergeant John Jensen for his service and sacrifice. So thanks to Beyond the Call of Duty and End of Watch Ride. Next slide, please. All right, Juneteenth was celebrated there in District 2 as it is annually. It's one of the uh, longer running uh, celebrations in the city. So we all got together and had a, a very large parade, the largest to date, and a community event there at Lincoln Park. Uh, the far greater historical Northside community uh, went ahead and put that together. So appreciation to Sharon Warren, their uh, president, and Kirkpatrick Middle School Alumni Association for helping out, Corvette Car Club, the Slingshot Clubs, uh, Northwest Crime Division Specialist, uh, Doc Kent was also there, and many of uh, the folks from the city, including uh, community liaison Ogun Allen and the North Triathlete Center staff. Next slide, please. All right, it was my honor and privilege to present a proclamation from Mayor and Council to Valeria Howard Cunningham of the Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeo. Uh, gave them a big, you know, Fort Worth welcome, including uh, Mayor Eric Johnson, the city of Dallas, who was there with his family attending. He really did appreciate uh, being there at the Countdown Coliseum. Eric did say he only got mild booze, so that was good. <laughs> he did? Well, we, well. we were somewhat friendly to poor Mayor Johnson in Fort Worth. <laughs> I think we were fairly friendly. Thanks, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Next slide, please. All right, uh, the OSC, which is the One Second Collaborative uh, Steering Committee. I co-chair that along with Council Member uh, Williams, and uh, we met here recently, uh, led by United Way of Fort Worth, uh, had members of the Police Department, uh, Assistant Chief Aldridge, uh, Tarrant County Representation, and other stakeholders. And so we're bringing evidence-based approach to addressing youth gun violence. It's a big problem, uh, but we're finding solutions, and we're beginning to uh, assemble uh, certain tangibles for that, and you'll hear more about it as we approach uh, that date. All right, I think I have some announcements here. Frost Bank, in collaboration with the City of Fort Worth, is hosting a home event on Saturday, June 29th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Diamond Hill Community Center. They have speakers from the city, uh, Frost, Tad, uh, former Councilman Sal Espino will also be covering the transfer on death, uh, uh, what am I trying to say, uh, legal advice there as well as a DIY class. Next slide. Marine Creek Ranch HOA uh, is holding their uh, uh, annual uh, fireworks show. It's called Light Up the Lake Fireworks, June 29th, 5.30 to 10 p.m. at Marine Creek Ranch Amenity Center at 5403 Paloma Blanca Drive. So uh, hopefully we'll see you out there. Next announcement, a couple more left. Uh, Northside Neighborhood Association is having their annual 4th of July parade on Saturday, July 6th at 9 a.m. Parade route beginning at J.P. Elder and ending at Marine Park for a little uh, party. Next slide. Uh, the historic Northside District is celebrating uh, July 4th on July 6th with a Sonidos del Summer headliner Express uh, Latin Express band. Uh, so come on out. It's free entertainment, uh, food trucks, etc. cetera. Uh, appreciate all the sponsors. Last announcement, Dog Rescue Day at the Hotel Drover. And if you're searching for your perfect canine companion, this is a good event to come to. Uh, dogs need homes. Our shelters are close to capacity or already at capacity. So come on by. There's good merchandise there that benefit the care of our uh, pets and uh, lots of things, including specialty dog bakery. So come on by Sunday, July 14th from 12 to 3 p.m. That's all I have. Thank you. Councilmember Hill. I just have one announcement. Um, enjoy free admission to the Fort Worth Nature Center on with your library card on the first Monday starting July and August. Um, we're going to have story times from 10 and 11 a.m. at the Hardware Interpretive Visitor Center and the Nature Center. And for more information, um, visit the library webpage or you can scan the QR code. Thank you. Councilmember Nettles. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Mayor Parker. Um, Dr. Opalee New Home is in District 8, so we want to thank uh, Trinity Habitat for Humanity, History, Maker Homes, and J.C. Penney's for all sponsoring, making sure that event happened. It was a great event. Uh, it was quietly uh, heated out there. Uh, but uh, Michael Crane and Mayor Parker and others have joined us in that uh, history-making day. Next slide, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Go back to that slide. And that's uh, my beautiful daughter, Christiana, had an opportunity to be next with Dr. Opalee. Uh, 
um, Juneteenth celebration uh, at the uh, Lenora Rollins uh, Heritage Trace Center, uh, Heritage Center. And y'all look at the slides. Um, I actually uh, designed my own slides this week. So that's probably why Lenora is kind of out. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. So I, I put in the good work, guys. It took me, took me two, week, two hours. Uh, <laughs> YMCA Youth Art Contest. Um, I had an opportunity to be a, a, a judge uh, there. It was a great event down here in downtown Fort Worth. I mean, those slides, look at the slides, guys. Pretty cool. Uh, YMCA Block Party. <laughs> the YMCA Block Party uh, had birthday to William McDonald. Um, it was heated that day. A lot of people come out. It was a great event. Next slide. Tough Kids. Tough Kids Celebration uh, Kickball. Uh, you see Councilwoman Beck, we was on opposite sides. And the next slide will really show what happened. That is Councilwoman Beck complaining, asking for more points. The next slide, the next slide please, shows Councilman Nettles' reaction about why we lost because Councilman Beck added points to her list. So those are the slides. So thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity. Councilmember Beck opportunity to correct that record. Uh, before we get started on our slides, um, there is someone standing um, against the wall over there who's going to be a little embarrassed. One of our city attorneys, Mr. Nico Arias, not only is today his birthday, um, but this will be his last council meeting before he leaves us to go join the Navy JAG. So I just wanted to give him an official send off and congratulations. <laughs> Happy birthday's coming later. All right, next slide. Okay, so um, we had an amazing event at Greenbrier Community Center. If you don't know, Texas Parks and Wildlife stocks this um, pond four times a year, but this was the Osprey Bass Anglers um, Youth Fishing Festival, and you can see there um, one of our MPOs, Mike Vargas, is is giving uh, one of the catfish uh, some loving in that, in that photo. These kids were really doing a great job. There were over 200 participants in that particular event. Next slide. Okay, Trinity Pride Fest. I really appreciate uh, those members of council and former members of council and members of our state delegation that joined us that incredibly hot day um, out on Magnolia on the Green. Next slide. Just a couple more photos of that day. Uh, next slide. All right, so there's a lot going on at the Fort Worth Zoo right now. If you have not had the opportunity to go out and visit, really in the last 30 days, I suggest you do so because we've been able to open two new facilities for them. Um, and this one was the grand reopening of the mountain and desert in Texas Wild, which happens to be my favorite um, part of the zoo because it highlights um, our Chisos Mountains in that area in far west Texas. And so you can see me hanging out with um, a couple snakes, and that's in the picture on the right right, not the left. Those are my council members, just for clarification. Next slide. Um, we did have the LGBTQ chief of police and uh, fire chief happy hour. Um, it was a really great event, and I think I only have one slide for that. Um, really appreciate the 440 and the Police Officers Association for um, underwriting that event to make it um, really something fantastic. Next slide. Okay, we had a South Hills neighborhood event. You can see there um, me with a pupper, more to come on that later. Um, Air One, I can tell you that hot helicopter and horses are um, the kids' favorite thing. And then on the right, you'll see a photograph with um, me and my niece and her Fort Worth PD badge. Next slide, the recruiters get them young these days. Um, next slide, okay. This is Blue. Blue was on the euthanization list at our Fort Worth Animal Shelter, and I am a sucker and cannot say no, and so I am now fostering this great big gentle giant. He is looking for a forever home, and I see my uh, predecessor, Joel Burns, in the room, and he, um, I think, might take him, but if he doesn't... <laughs> If he doesn't, um, he is looking for a great home. I will tell you, he's a really great dog. He's <laughs> we can vote on that, Joel. Yes. Does that sound good? Yes. Motion in a second. Yes. Take care of that. What's one, what's one more? Um, he's a really great dog. He's good with um, dogs and cats. He's great on a leash. Um, he's a really great hiking partner. He's about 70 pounds, and I imagine he will um, get a little bigger than that because he's a little skin and bones right now. So um, 
Well, they said he's two, but he's got a little bit more puppy in him than a two-year-old, so I think he might have some room to grow. But someone please adopt him because um, I'm becoming attached to him and I cannot keep him. So, next slide. All right, the Texas Pride Impact Fund Luncheon was held here in Fort Worth this year. It was a great event, um, raising money for um, to help distribute around the state for LGBTQ organizations doing grassroots work. Next slide. Okay, um, as you have heard incorrectly, there's some been erroneous information about said kickball tournament put out on this dais today. And as you can see, there is a trophy in front of one of our um, spots and it's not Councilman Nettles. I think it's because his shorts were not short enough this year. So that's probably why he didn't win. Um, we did win 13 to seven. And I will tell you two of those seven points were actually supposed to go to us. Okay, 12 to seven, but two of those, it was supposed to be 14 to five. They gave him two of our points. So even with Councilman Nettles stealing two of our points, we were still able to win this year's um, Tough Stars Give Back Celebrity Kickball Tournament. And the, Oh, two and oh, yeah. Um, we're going strong here in District 9. And the little girl you see there is one of our Fort Worth police officers' um, daughters, and she was our MVP. I will tell you, um, that little girl kept me on my P's and Q's. So look out for her because she is going to do something one day for sure. Next slide. Okay, we have the downtown water and sewer replacement briefing this Thursday, June 27th. It's gonna be a pretty big project coming to downtown and there will be some street closures as part of that. Uh, many of you remember the massive uh, water main break that we had on Lancaster last year. Um, the geyser coming up um, out of the street, it actually called for a swift water rescue. So we will be doing the work to repair that and make sure that we are updating our transmission lines. Next slide. Okay, uh, 4th of July is coming up. I hope you will join us at Panther Island Pavilion on the 4th for a free and legal fireworks show. So I encourage you to um, hold off on lighting your own fireworks and come see what the professionals do downtown. Next slide. Okay, pet adoption events. Not at my house, but you can come pick them up if you want. Um, we have at the Cicada at... Um, 12.0, I'm sorry, 10.02 South Main on the 28th this July um, from 2 to 5, and then our Maple Branch Craft Brewery um, uh, from 1 to 5 on the same day. I normally give a plug that you could have a couple beers and then take a dog home, and that's the way to do it. Um, or if you really want a, a German Shepherd, you can call me and we'll get you one. And that's all I got. Thank you, Elizabeth. And our last but not least, Councilmember Martinez. So Elizabeth, I have to say that I think you are Blue's forever home. Um, I do want to share uh, <laughs> details about our World Environment Day. So June 6, for those that don't know, was World Environment Day, and we celebrated it in District 11 by hosting an uh, Environment Day event. And so we partnered with our environmental department team and Frost Bank. Uh, so a big thank you to Christian Harper, Jim Cazell, Ruben Diaz, for being out there and, and, and helping us with this and also bringing our next gen ambassadors and from the Frost Bank team, Christian Martinez, who was here earlier, I don't think she's still here, and Varun Malipadi, who uh, brought their big uh, shredding, document shredding truck. And so I don't have the amounts of uh, paper that we shredded that day or documents, but I do have some numbers from our environmental team. So, uh, and this is waste that would, usually go or if you know people aren't responsible to the landfill but we were able to keep that out of the landfill and you know just have a healthier uh, environment so paints uh, in pounds we uh, collected 175 pounds solvents five pounds aerosol two pounds flammable items 100 pounds pesticides five pounds cleaners one corrosive such as batteries five pounds cooking oil 10 pounds and electronics that were recycled 100 pounds so i'm very proud of the numbers that we uh, received and, and the attendance that uh, came that day. So thank you. Thank you, Rachel. You did a great job uh, at the event, also helping organize it. Um, and so next slide. I'd like to enjoy, uh, invite everybody who's looking for a job or know somebody that's looking for a job. We're having a citywide job fair partnering with Goodwill of North Central Texas and also Texas Wesleyan University. So it will be on the campus of Texas Wesleyan University from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday, August 17th. A registration will open soon, but uh, for now, please help us spread the word. Thank you.
Council, that's the last of our presentations. Mayor, next will be speakers on non-consent agenda items. Thank you, Jeanette. Council, um, we've got a few here that are, um, I'm gonna take and wait to the end because they're mostly on an item that we're actually gonna take up towards them, which is MNC 24-0550 pertaining to Fort Worth Heritage Development. So I'm gonna hold off on those speakers. So if I'm out of order, that's why. Our first is Chris Gee. Is G. Is Chris here? Hi, Chris. Chris will be followed by, just a second here. <clears throat> We're gonna pull it out of order and do it after you go ahead and speak. Okay. So yes, you're in good, you're in good company here. Great, um, so my name is Chris G. I'm the president of the Ryan Place Improvement Association. I'm here on behalf of um, RPIA and want to express enthusiastic support for the renaming of Ryan Place Park after Joan Klein. At RPIA's February board meeting, we voted unanimously to support this effort and communi communicated that to Councilwoman Beck's office as well as the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Ms. Klein was a founding member of the Ryan Place Improvement Association, a fierce protector of Ryan Place and a force for good throughout the Southside community and Fort Worth at large. Her strong leadership, generous spirit, and meaningful accomplishments on behalf of our community are more than worthy of this honor. So I would ask that the city council vote in favor of this change when it comes up. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Councilman Rebecca, I do believe that's the only speaker we have on this item, and we're going to pull it out of order for City Secretary's Office. That's MNC 24-0613, and the floor belongs to Councilman Rebecca. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to read some of uh, Joan Klein's uh, highlights, and they certainly are just highlights, because if we sit here today, I'm going to get emotional. It's because Joel's here. Um, if we sat here today and listed all of her um, accomplishments, we would literally be here all day, so bear with me. Joan Klein lived her life with an unwavering dedication to the improvement of her community and to Fort Worth's near Southside neighborhoods especially. The list of initiatives led by Joan Klein is impossible to capture in its entirety, but the highlights are well known. In the 1980s, Joan played an instrumental role in the early re revitalization of a worn down near Southside corridor known as Magnolia Avenue, where Joan partnered with other community leaders and the city of Fort Worth to lead a public and private restoration projects, including her own 1301 West Magnolia, the landmark building now home to the Pie Tap restaurant. In the early 1990s, many years of Jones preservation advocacy accumulated in the successful local designation and protection of the historic Fairmount neighborhood and the historic homes on Elizabeth Boulevard, setting the stage for a remarkable comeback to those neighborhoods that it continues today. In the mid-1990s, much of Joan's civic energy went to the founding of a pioneering economic and community development organization known today as Near Southside, Inc., established to lead the revitalization of the medical district and surrounding neighborhoods, and boy, did she ever. Um, the, ensuring, the ensuing progress was remarkable, and many of the projects and strategies instrumental to the Near Southside success would become models for other areas across Fort Worth and beyond owing much uh, to Joan's vision and the spirit of collaboration. Joan was also heavily involved in the bold efforts to relocate I-30 from its location above Lancaster Avenue, which had blighted the southern edge of downtown Fort Worth, and to better connect downtown and the near south side through the new underpass connection at Hemphill and Lamar. Over 30 years later, and after many tough battles in courtrooms and council chambers, Joan celebrated the grand opening of the new Hemp Hill Lamar Connector, featuring a signature public art installation and new landmark for Fort Worth's future. Into her 90s, Joan continued to champion important policies and projects that transformed our cities. As a prophet of placemaking long before the phrase was in fashion and a firm believer in the value of quality public spaces, Joan led the expansion of Fire Station Park. Through an unlikely but truly special partnership and friendship, Joan's final and perhaps... most community-focused project... 
teamed her with a group of ambitious young state skateboarders. Together, Joan and the skateboarding community spent seven years championing this major expansion of Fire Station Park and the creation of Dickey Skate Park Plaza, in which she was there to um, proudly stomp the first skateboard in the ribbon cutting. Uh, Joan was um, absolutely committed to creating and improving public parks, to improving education of our children, and to the preservation of historic neighborhoods and landmarks. Joan was also a woman of the people working self selflessly for her community. Above all these community accomplishments, Joan was truly most proud as a mother, grandmother, and wife. Um, today, we're going to rename a park in Ryan Place after Joan Klein. And this park is special and I think so um, so poignant that we name it after her because it's not just a park in the neighborhood, but it's one that the community has come together and raised funds for to help improve and adopt and make their own. And that is truly the spirit of Joan Klein in action. So I could not think of a better space to name after her. And um, there are some people in the audience that are here because Joan did so much for them when they were leaders on council. And I see um, Joel Burns and Ann Zeta, and we all have a story um, to tell about how Joan guided us through the process of representing District 9, um, always with a loving but firm touch. Um, several of her children are in the room today, and I'm sure that they will also echo the loving but firm touch that Joan could give. And so at this time, I would like to invite the members of the Klein family up, um, and Ann Zeta, Joel Burns, if you'd like to share any unique um, stories or memories about um, your mother or Ms. Joan Klein. Sure. Parker, Council. My name is Joe Klein. I am not only the son of Joan Klein, I also worked with her for the last 25 years at Klein & Company. During that time, I escorted her to just about every awards dinner where she was being honored. Whether it was a public school being named after her because of her commitment to public education, or the multicultural alliance that was near and dear to her, or the Near South Side organization that she helped usher into existence. It was also something that she was not real comfortable with and she did not like speaking in public, even though she did it well. It was never about the accolades for my mother. It was about taking action when there was something she could do that she felt would be good for Fort Worth. That being said, having a public park in her beloved Ryan Place neighborhood, where it all began with her founding of the Ryan Place Improvement Association, renamed to Joan Klein Park is something I feel she would fully embrace and be very happy with. So on behalf of the Klein family and Klein and Company, we thank you. Dan's gonna let me go first. Uh, when I told my husband JD that I was coming down here, he said, well, if they ask you to speak, please don't cry. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, I saw a photo of Joan this morning and the, my first, I was still in bed, and I was looking on Facebook, and um, my first response was to smile because there's a lot of happiness that comes with my. Uh, it. Okay, it's a district nine thing. It's fine. I'm going to look at I'm going to look at Michael Crane, which may make me cry <laughs> for different reasons. Uh, for different reasons, exactly. Um, and um, and then after you know the smile comes the the thoughts of sadness of loss and and all of us who've lost people in our lives that we care about, you know that loss, the sadness gets more and more stretched out, and it gets a little less intense as time goes by. That will continue. The smiles will always happen with Joan. When I see photos of her, I will always smile. Um, in terms of a story about Joan that Elizabeth asked me to tell, I'm, uh, the one that comes to mind is, a, is a, a situation, which I won't go into the details, but there was a number of District 9 residents and a number of personal friends who were on one side of an issue, and there were a number of District 9 residents that I represented, including personal friends on another. And there was an impasse, and I, Joan was a great mentor. She's a great sounding board. She's a great person to say, I don't know what to do on this. And I went to her, and I told her, kind of laid out where things were. 
And she went through and she said all the good things about the first group and all the good points that they had and all the ways that they were right. And then she went through the second group and she said, these are all the good points about them and these are the ways that they're right. And then she sat there, dang it. She just let me be in the dissonance of, there are people on different sides of different issues and it doesn't mean that any one side is wrong. It doesn't mean that one side is bad. There's good in everything and you just have to kind of let it settle and see. And she's like, you'll come up with the right decision. And that's hard. It's easy to tell a friend, oh, go with A, oh, go with B. It's hard to tell your friends both are right and you need to come up with the correct answer. That's a hard thing and that's a lesson I learned from Joe Klein, for which I'm greatly appreciative. Well said, Joel. I did not prepare remarks, so I will just briefly say that some of the most biggest accomplishments that I was able to do while I served on Fort Worth City Council were because of and in combination and collaboration with Joan Klein. And what I take away from that is that we should all continue to be motivated to do things in our community to improve and make our communities better. The big things that she worked on, the relocation of I-30, the bringing of a skate park, those are things that we can all accomplish and continue to do that work. And the memory of Joan is what keeps me in this work and doing this work every day so that we can all work really hard to make our community the places that we want it to be. So I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, I enthusiastically move to approve. Council, any other discussion? If not, please vote. Motion carries. Next will be 24-4414, which is board appointments from District 6. Councilmember Williams. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I request the uh, uh, council's consideration to appoint the following individual to the board listed below to fulfill a vacancy with the term effective June 25th, 2024 and ending October 1st, 2024. Sean Robart, a partial term to the Community Development Council. The respective application or resume are attached. The original copy will be maintained in the city secretary's office. Motion a second. Council, please vote. And carries. Next is the board appointments for District 11, which I believe Councilmember Martinez is withdrawing at this time. Councilmember Martinez. Yes, so I am withdrawing this appointment, and not because, uh, you know, for any bad reason. Uh, Ricky Cotto is a great individual who was offered a, a position that, or an appointment that would be a better fit. So um, just with that, I'll motion to withdraw. Motion and a second. What she's not telling you is that I stole her appointment and I did not mean to, but it just means that Council District 11 has wonderful people. So we'll be careful about that next time. Please vote, Council. Aries. Next is resolution 24-4416. Council, I can entertain a motion on this one. Council Member Bivens. I think it goes without saying I would have some remarks on this. And I would like for staff to come to the podium, be prepared for questions. And if there is anyone in the audience who worked on this plan, please wave your hand. I don't want to leave anybody out. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I want to acknowledge the citizens who had countless encounters to get feedback on this master plan. I have seen uh, feedback that indicates there's a desire for a stronger plan. I think the idea that this plan does not include fines has given some people the misunderstanding that we're not going to address fines. So what I will tell you is, and Betsy, you'll remember this, the rains of 2018. Uh, after those rains, we realized that the then director of this department had the authority 
to negotiate fines administratively. So we took that authority away so that people would not think that we were making backdoor deals with people who would cut our trees down. Uh, DJ Halton is over the department now. Can you talk about the time frame and why this does not include fines, but we are getting there? Yes, ma'am. This is an initial work. Um, basically, the Urban Forestry Master Plan just lays out the overall objectives and goals of the city. Uh, and it also offers recommendations for implementation. Uh, one of the recommendations, recommendation number two, includes updating the ordinance with additional fines and additional uh, incentives toward preservation goals. Now, I don't want you guys tricking me and Alan into anything. Uh, my question to you now is, is there anything in this resolution that in your mind would prohibit or restrict us from deciding on the, a level of fines in the future? You're not boxing us in, are you? Absolutely not. Okay, Alan, you have any Anything to add? Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, thank you, DJ. I know a lot of time and energy and effort from a lot of people have gone into this, and I really want to say thank you for that. And along with Mayor Pro Tem, I uh, want to be clear that the job is not done yet. And so uh, let's keep working forward towards the best possible solution for our city. And I want to thank you for stepping in to help me with staff on this. One thing I would have the public know is that when I look at fines being levied in other cities, you know, Dallas has a minimum fine of $2,000 if you take away an old growth tree. You know, ours has people, the, the way we're looking at it is, you know, we're going to look at inches. I don't like that. I think that gets a little bit too manipulative and it gives someone the freedom to say, oh, well, I could just go cut that down because it's five and a half inches. I don't want that kind of crazy going on. And so we will have a robust conversation leading up to hopefully September, Mayor, because I want to get these fines cleared before we enter the silly season of the election you know, for next year. And so my goal is, is to have this on the agenda for September where we talk about fines and I'm letting all the tree huggers out there know, get ready, because it's going to be a conversation. And I think every tree hugger in Fort Worth, that includes myself, will be very happy with this. Elizabeth, I don't know what that character is that you call me. The Lorax. Okay. She speaks for the trees. Okay. One day I'm going to, I have no, I don't know what that is. One day I'm, I'm going to figure that out. But she, she told me it, it wasn't negative. Uh, he tells me it's Dr. Zeus. So I'll check with Paul Geisel on that to make sure you're not calling me out of my name. But whatever it takes to make people understand, we in Fort Worth are not going to tolerate developers coming here going willy-nilly willy taking down our trees. The sad thing is, when the trees were taken down back in 2018, there was a guy, a neighbor, who heard the trees being taken down, but he didn't know to make a call. So we have to be able to educate the public, and I would like for us to make sure we don't rely on volunteers. We gotta staff up and make this thing happen because we're not gonna have our trees taken out because we're being too timid. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted you to know, general public, this isn't the end of it, but it is a very well-labored beginning. Uh, I think we updated the ordinance 20, 2009 before we took away that authority in 2020. And so 2024 is the year I want to see us really get this anchored in. And I expect you to bring that to me. And if there's anything in here that your people are trying to trick us into, I'm going to call you out on it at that microphone because we, we've got to be able to do right by the trees. And so with that, yeah, I move for approval. Got a motion and a second on the floor. Any other discussion, council? Thank you, and thank you, DJ. Chris, try again, sorry. You good? Okay. Motion carries. Next is item 24-4370. Council, we do have um, one speaker on this item, Mr. Willoughby, if he's still here, marshals can grab him. Um, I will say I appreciate my council. We, there's a lot of different good ideas and opinions about any um, different council rules of procedure. 
And so I had asked council to consider tabling this item until August when we come back to do a full work session for open public discussion on any changes of rules. And then we would ultimately vote on that subsequent meeting after that. Um, and any discussion is welcome at this time. I just wanted to lay the land before we asked Mr. Willoughby to speak, if he's here. No go, okay. With that, I can open the floor with any discussion. Otherwise, we can motion to table. Is that what you need us to do? Can no, I, go ahead. I, yes, Councilmember Nevis, Mayor, thank I agree you. with you. Uh, give an opportunity for us to dis, uh, discuss this in open work session about uh, some of the ideas that I brought forth. So I will motion to continue this item until. Do you need a certain just table? Just table, table it. We'll bring it back in okay. August. Okay. Got a motion to table on the floor. Got a motion and a second. Any other discussion, Council? Please vote. Next item is 24-4328. Got a motion and a second. Council, thank you for support. Just for the public's note, note here, I'm appointing myself to the board of the Metropolitan Area EMS Authority, known as MedStar. Um, most importantly, because this is a serious opportunity for the city of Fort Worth, and I thought it warranted the strength of the mayor's office. So I'll be joining Councilmember Flores on the MedStar board, and I appreciate your support. Please vote. Yeah. Motion carries. Next item is 24-4360. I can entertain a motion, Council. Okay. Motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries. Next item is 24-4420. Motion, Council. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? Please vote. Jared stepped away. Thank you. Next item is 24-4419. Council, this is the ordinance pertaining to the Fort Worth Community Land Trust. I know we um, had several briefings on this item, but I might ask Fernando Costa to come down just very briefly and, and talk about this before we continue with a vote. It's, it's quite an exciting opportunity for the city and still early in its infancy of where it's headed. Fernando. Thank you, uh, Mayor Parker. The Fort Worth City Council has been instrumental in the creation of the Fort Worth Community Land Trust and in helping the land trust to acquire property for the development of affordable housing. The land trust essentially will own uh, the land and will develop affordable housing which uh, they will sell to working families in order to uh, help them uh, become uh, 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 independent. And the uh, ordinance that appears on your agenda today would formally recognize the Fort Worth Community Land Trust for purposes of granting them tax exemption uh, the land uh, which they own will be tax exempt uh, with respect to city property taxes, but as they develop and sell housing to working families, those families will pay full city property taxes. Uh, effectively, the city will receive more revenue from the property in the future than we have been receiving because the property was formerly owned by the seminary and therefore uh, had been tax exempt. Uh, so we recommend uh, your favorable action uh, on this ordinance today. Thank you, Fernando. Questions from council? Councilmember Beck, please. Uh, before I make the motion to approve, I just, for those of you who aren't familiar with how this um, project took shape, um, it was a, a panicked phone call at like four o'clock to the mayor. Do you know anybody at the seminary? And um, they're about to sell this property and it seems like an important piece of land for the city. And so um, I appreciate the mayor's willingness to jump in and um, get the ball rolling. And it went over several iterations of what it was gonna look like. And we were incredibly fortunate to have some philanth philanthropic groups in the city that stepped up to make this possible. And when we talk about affordable housing, one of the rubs that we typically hear here is that, well, it's just rental properties, and what does it do to help build um, generational wealth for these folks? And this is truly an opportunity for the city of Fort Worth to help these um, families 
have that pride of home ownership and build that generational wealth so that they can improve their um, improve their lot in life. And so I um, am very excited to make the motion to approve what will be the largest land trust in the United States when all of this is said and done. In a second, council, any other discussion? Please vote. Motion carries. Next item is MNC 24-0591. And we have one speaker on this item, Bob Willoughby, but I don't believe he's still Mayor, here. we have a staff report by... Yeah, I know, I know. Okay. I'm just letting you know. And then our staff report will be by Lorraine Coleman. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. I'm Lorraine Coleman with the Police Department, and the purpose of today's hearing is to receive public comment and act on a proposed amendment to the fiscal year 2024 budget of the Crime Control and Prevention District. City Council approval is the final step in the CCPD budget amendment process. City Council, uh, this amendment was approved by the CCPD board and reallocates savings in the recruit and training initiative to the Equipment, Technology, and Infrastructure Initiative in the amount of $4,265,000 for the Northwest Patrol Division project. At the May 21st CCPD board meeting, staff made a recommendation to amend the budget by shifting forecasted savings from the recruit training program into the facility requirement program with no increase to the total fiscal year 2024 CCPD budget. This reallocation will fund deficits in the Northwest Patrol Division project, which are due to the additional site work needed based on the condition of the property, as well as increases in construction costs since its inclusion in the 2022 bond program. The reallocation of funds from one program to the other does not increase the fiscal year 2024 budget, nor does it use fund balance. Following any public comment, staff recommends the City Council close the public hearing and act on the budget amendment in MNC. Thank you, Ms. Coleman. Any questions for Lorraine? If not, we can proceed with a motion. Move to approve, and I have just some brief remarks. Uh, kudos to staff uh, for the utilization of uh, these savings uh, to the new Northwest Division. Motion and a second, Council. Any other discussion? Please vote. Motion carries. Next item is MNC 24-0611 with report by Lori Gordon. Ms. Gordon. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. My name is Lori Gordon. I'm the Planning Manager with the Park and Recreation Department. The purpose of this public hearing is for public comment on the proposed use of a portion of Forest Park for a maintenance area. Forest Park is located in Council Districts 3 and 9. Staff is seeking Council's, author, author, council's author, authorization, excuse me, my notes, I'm changing tense here, use a portion of Forest Park for a maintenance area for the installation of a stormwater drainage project. In accordance with Chapter 26 of the Park, Texas Parks and Wildlife Code, City Council must find that no feasible or prudent alternative exists for the location of the improvements and find that, no, that, find that the proposed location includes all reasonable planning to minimize the impact to the park. The Chapter 26 process to protect the public park and recreational land when non-park related projects require the use of parkland. In this case, the implement of storm water drainage improvements to mitigate flooding is the reason. The proposed project improvements include the installation of a 36-inch uh, pipe at Rogers Avenue and University Drive as part of a city drainage improvement project. Construction is anticipated to begin in July of 2024 and last approximately four months. No park roadways or trails will be closed during construction, no trees are impacted, and the park will be restored to previous condition or better upon completion of the project. In accordance with the state law, the proposed use of parkland will be advertised uh, by the, in the uh, city's Fort Worth Star-Telegram on June 4th, June 11th, and June 18th of 2024. 
Information announcing the proposed use of parkland was posted on the city's webpage, signage posted at the project site, and sent via email to the registered neighborhood associations within a mile and a half of the project site on June 10th of 2024. As of this date, staff has received no public inquiries uh, on the proposed use as a result of these postings. On May 22nd of 2024, the Park and Recreation Advisory Board endorsed staff's recommendation to the City Council to authorize the use of the portion of Forest Park for a maintenance area for a drainage improvement project, and staff recommends hearing any additional public comment, and upon completion of the public comment period, staff recommends that City Council close the public hearing and act on the MNC. Thank you. Any questions for Lori? If not, we can proceed with closing the public hearing and taking an action. Motion and a second, please vote. Motion carries. Next will be MNC 24-0612 with report by Lori Gordon. Good afternoon again, Council and Mayor. Uh, Forest Park is a busy place lately. Uh, so anyway, uh, once again, I'm Lori Gordon with the, the Planning Manager of the Park and Recreation Department. The purpose of this public hearing is for public comment on the proposed use of a portion of Forest Park for utility easement. Forest Park is located in Council Districts 3 and 9. Staff is seeking City Council's authorization to use a portion of Forest Park for a utility easement as part of a city drainage improvement project adjacent to the zoo. In accordance with Chapter 26 of the Texas Parks and Wildlife Code, City Council must find that no feasible or prudent alternative exists for the location of the proposed improvements and find that the proposed locations include all reasonable planning to minimize impact to the parks. The Chapter 26 process is to protect public parks and recreation land when non-park related projects require use of parkland. In this case, the use of parkland is for the installation of a utility easement as part of a city drainage pro improvement project adjacent to the zoo. The proposed project improvements include installation of a fiber communication line through the park. The construction is anticipated to begin in July of this year and last about four months. Uh, there will be no impact to the park and the park will be returned to previous condition or better upon completion. In accordance with the state law, the proposed use of parkland will be advertised in the Star, Fort Worth Star-Telegram on June 4th, 11th, and uh, 18th of 2024. Information announcing the proposed use of parkland was posted on the city's webpage, signage at the project site, and uh, once again, sent via email to the registered neighborhood associations within a mile and a half of the project site on June 10th. As of today, city staff has received no public inquiries on the proposed use of the, uh, uh, because of these postings. On May 22nd, the Park and Recreation Advisory Board endorsed staff's recommendation for city council to authorize the use of a portion of Forest Park for a maintenance area for uh, draining and drain, drainage improvement projects. Staff recommends hearing any additional public comment and upon completion of the public comment, staff recommends city close, uh, council close the public hearing and vote on the MNC. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Council, I can entertain a motion. Motion and a second, please vote. Motion carries. Next is MNC 24-0552 with report by Sharon Berkeley. Sharon. Good afternoon, Mayor Parker and members of the City Council. I'm Sharon Berkeley, Community Development Planning Manager with the Neighborhood Services Department. The purpose of this public hearing is to receive comments regarding the 2024 to 2025 annual action plan required for the city's receipt of grant funds from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, known as HUD. The action plan specifies how grant, HUD grant funds will be used in the upcoming program year, which is year two of the consolidated plan from October 1st, 2024 to September 30th, 2025. Total amount of grant funds budgeted through this 2024 to 2025 action plan is $13,036,747 as well as an estimated amount of $100,000 in program income from use of grant funds in prior years. The specific grant sources are the Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, the Home Investment Partnerships Program, HOME, the Emergency Solutions Grant, ESG, and the Housing Opportunities for Persons with AIDS Program, HOPWA. 
The overall purpose of these funds is to assist low-income households and neighborhoods and focuses on the following nine council-approved priorities and goals. Housing preservation and rehabilitation, accessibility improvements, economic empowerment and financial resilience, affordable housing, children and youth services, aging in place, neighborhood improvement and revitalization, homelessness prevention and special needs support, and healthy living and wellness. Recommendations for this plan's funding allocations were developed with the assistance of the Community Development Council, which is the city's advisory board for use of these grant funds. This public hearing follows a 30-day comment period on the draft action plan, which ran from Wednesday, May 15th until Friday, June 14th. The draft plan was posted on the city's website for public review and copies were distributed to two regional city libraries, as well as made available in the Neighborhood Services Administrative Office. One additional public hearing was held during this 30-day period on May 29th at E.M. Chambly Library. As referenced in the submitted action plan, an amended plan will be submitted in the event that one or more awarded agencies is unable to execute a contract with the city if required to do so by HUD. Staff is requesting that following any additional comments received today, this public hearing be closed and the MNC be approved. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. We do have two speakers on this item. The first is Theron Bryant, followed by Adrian Smith. Sorry. Okay. Mr. Smith. So as it uh, relates to this particular agenda item, you all would know, know, notice in your council correspondence that I signed up as being against this. However, I'm not against the allocation of the money and the purposes, purpose that this money is going to serve. It's going to serve a great purpose. What I am against, however, is who's going to ensure that this federal money is earmarked for these very necessary purposes are used rightly. Now, this is nothing to these various agencies receiving it, these funding, this funding. Nothing to these agencies. I'm grateful for these agencies. But we know there is a lack of funding when it comes to those who are considered mm, less at least in this community, in this city. So hopefully with this federal money that's earmarked, that has been earmarked, there will be some type of accountability because we know what you all did with the ARPA funds, if I need to remind everyone. Flush with federal funds, Fort Worth spends 146 million in six months. This was the ARPA funds. Fort Worth report dated May 17, 2020. So I know you're getting sleepy, Mayor. I know you're getting sleepy. But it's your job to sit there and listen. So, again, this federal money. We know federal money, once it comes in, if there's no oversight, it vanishes. Federal money has a tendency to just magically end up in places it shouldn't. Unlike Local tax dollars, you know, that you all have to make sure you dot all your I's and cross all your T's on because you know there's, there's a greater scrutiny when it comes to local money. But federal money, we know everybody puts their hand in a pot when it comes to federal money and take out, you know, because there's never no oversight in federal, you know, with the federal money. So to the, all of the agencies receiving funding, uh, it's, it's my desire that you get more. It's my desire that you get more. Thank you for all that you do as it relates to the various, various services that you provide to this city for those who have needs. But again, with this group, and this is my last time putting this disclaimer, it doesn't apply to all of you, but to this group, you all are the overseers. You all are the ones who have to ensure that every dollar allocated is used for the purposes it's used for. Council, let's last our speakers on this item. Motion and a second, please vote. Oh, Council Member Williams, please. 
Um, yeah, Mayor, I need to um, recuse myself due to my employment with the Terranary Food Bank and my paperwork is on file with the City Secretary. Thank you, Jared. Council, please vote. <laughs> Motion carries. Next item is ZC-24-012. Councilmember Flores, we do have a few speakers on this item. Um, I believe all of them but one are only if there's opposition. So I'll call on Nick Martin first. Uh, there is opposition, I apologize. So Nick Martin followed by Jason Eggenberger. Is Nick here? Okay. And Nick, as you're getting started, Darren, just for clarification, I think you were on the different item, but do you want to speak on this item? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Nick, go ahead. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Jason Eggenberger. Hi, I'm in, my name is Jason Eggenberger. I work with uh, 97W Architects. We do uh, a lot of uh, urban infill within the city. Uh, this project is on North Main Street. It is known as the Mulholland Building. It's a, it's a collective group of buildings. Um, there's a single story, another single story, and then, a, and then two two-story buildings that kind of make one complete um, complex. Um, this project is into federal historic as well as state historic. And uh, we've already received comments back from state that we've addressed. And so that's kind of where that building currently sits. Uh, the uses for the building would be your typical mixed use. It would be uh, sort of lo local restaurant, retail, those type of type of people going in. Um, for the upstairs of this, the two-story part, we, we were looking at putting in 16 uh, multifamily units that would be about six, 600, 700 square feet. Um, on the back side, that's tracked one. For the zoning issue, the, there's, a, there's a back side to it that is tracked two. Right now, there's, it's two lots that we're putting together. One has a burned down, one had a burned down house, and one's empty lot. Uh, we're, we're putting a, the desire is to put a parking lot there with a dumpster since we're, since track one is landlocked, we'd like to put a, a dumpster there and it would provide 16 parking spaces which would, which would help the building operate. Um, anything else? Uh, I think that's most of the, the detailed things. And Jason, just for my orientation, this site plan that you handed us yes, is the parking lot what you just described and on. the dog park that is adjacent to that? Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. track two. Yes, Thank and, you. And so that would give a buffer from QT. I think that some of the issues that have been, have been brought forth with the neighborhood would be issues from QT to that to the then what would be the residential. So I think we believe that that would be a great buffer there with the green, green and then the parking lot. So kind of stop some of the, the issues from the QT flow in that direction. Right, and do you know in the past if um, on that second story there's ever been housing or multifamily? There was housing okay. there originally. I think there okay. was, uh, I think when the, when the neighborhood first started, I think uh, Jewish workers were actually the ones living there. So okay. we have found some of that. Okay, very interesting. And thank a hotel, you. that's right, it was also a hotel. Thank you. So workforce living, I would call it. Okay, thank you, Jason. I don't have any other questions. Carlos, did you have questions for Jason? No questions, Mayor, but I do have uh, remarks later. Okay, I'll wait. Th thank you. Nick Martin? Uh, Nick Martin, District 3, uh, partner together with Theron Bryant and Jeff Givens. Uh, in the last uh, month or so, we've had some community outreach. We've spoken with uh, the Northside Neighborhood Association, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and then gone back out and spoken with some local uh, residents on the Commerce Street and Central Street there. Uh, we've spoken to them about their concerns. The majority is encroachment on the neighborhood. Uh, given the uh, specific uh, uh, Zoning requests, we've downgraded those. So the MU1, we've downgraded that. We're open to removing the hotel use uh, to uh, try to uh, uh, lower the, the parking concerns in the future. On the parking uh, lot, the two lots there, track two behind that, uh, we have, we're going for a PD uh, neighborhood commercial, and then it's the lowest setting that we possibly can uh, ask for. We're uh, going as, as, as low as we can, uh, putting restrictions in place so that that can never be used for anything else in the future, or we would have to go back before this council and request uh, additional PD changes. Um, while speaking to the residents, they seemed um, to acknowledge that um, 
uh, given those restrictions in place, we're not trying to bulldoze the neighborhood. We're not trying to push anyone out. It's really just these two lots. This parking will be used for uh, some of the residents, the 16 residents of the apartments that are on the second floor. And we don't want to contribute to the parking issues that this street and the area already have. In addition to that, we've been working with um, the Hispanic Chamber and other local residents. We have signed a community benefits agreement. Uh, over this, we, are, we have highlighted some of the specific things that we're going to do to improve security, cleanliness, curb appeal, and quality life. So basically, I will be taking over after the development phase for the property management. So this pr project is long term. This is a long hold. This isn't something that we're going to come into, develop, and then leave. We're here for the long haul. And from a property management standpoint, I will be there with my team. So working with uh, neighborhood residents to watch that security. We're putting up security cameras, additional lighting. Uh, we're going to have nightly security patrols, daytime patrols with property management, cleanliness. We're going to be washing trash. Residents have talked about there's some serious trash issues, including um, there are uh, people experiencing homeless, homelessness in this area, so we will be working with the community, with the local residents, to uh, work on improving those issues. From a, a curb appeal standpoint, we're going to be re rejuvenating the front. So all in all, it, uh, most of the residents that we spoke to see this as a net benefit to that area, that marine, the historic marine district. Thank you very much. Nick, question. I know it's probably contingent upon this zoning case, but do you have retailers that you're trying to focus on for this particular site? We do. Um, and actually, Theron can speak a little bit better That's to great. that. Thank you, Nick. Any other questions? That's Not it. a question, but Go before ahead. we get to that point, I want to offer some elaboration. Mm -hmm. We touched on this uh, earlier back in May when I decided to continue this case, but it's noteworthy to, to say that we're very sensitive in the approach, and I say we, including my office, the developers, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the Northside Historic District, to the uh, perceived impacts, right, to, to the neighborhood, because there is uh, B2 residential that is, uh, you know, rearing uh, North Main on that corridor. And so the parking lots that, you know, are referred to, mm -hmm. there is precedent for them. Uh, the, you know, the now defunct uh, El Rancho Grande Tex-Mex restaurant, which now is the original, has an overflow parking lot already and has for years mm -hmm. on North Commerce. Next to it, the Mulholland Company also had an overflow parking lot. So this is without precedent. There are empty lots there that we're utilizing to help support this redevelopment and offer a little more uh, uh, detail. There is a homeless issue, an ongoing homeless issue on the QT at the end of the block. You have homeless folks that migrate through the alleyway and it causes a lot of concern for the residents on North Commerce. When we first met and discussed this, one of the ideas that I you know, presented to the developer and they were very open to it, is maybe perhaps vacating the alleyway or having some security measures there from the parking lots that would alleviate that problem. So there are a lot of benefits to that. And again, thank you for uh, crafting that uh, CBA. I think that's also a testament to your long-term commitment. Thank you, Councilman Flores. Our next speaker is Theron Bryant, followed by David Siros. Thank you, Council. Um, yes, I'm here to maybe talk about the original vision and where, where we are now. Uh, the original vision was definitely as as you drive in from the north heading to the stockyards, that, that is the, that's the first look. So we wanted to bring that back and bring commerce onto North Main and really specifically to the Marine District. Uh, we have focused our leasing uh, on, on a, I guess, Hispanic, Latina type, type tenant mix, and, uh, but trying to also uh, utilize all the uh, tourism that that we're having in the stockyards. So, and it has been, uh, we've had a great, uh, it's been, we've had great in interest right now. I have two LOIs signed in the direction that we're looking for, which is uh, La Penderia and uh, La Palteria. So ice cream and, and bread. Then and, uh, we've also got a kind of Western, a well-known uh, Western Hispanic even clothing. So it's a, um, that's going well, and, and our direction's going very well on that. So, uh, but that is, uh, any questions? Okay, thank you. Sorry about that, got distracted there. Thank you, Theron. Our next speaker is David Sirios, followed by Annette Landeros. 
Annette Landeros. Hello, Council. Thank you again um, for the opportunity to speak on behalf of this project, only because we've been really involved with this. Um, one, this is the property across the street directly from our Hispanic Chamber of Commerce building where we've been sitting for about 25, 26 years. And two, because we, as you know, are um, engaged with Main Street America for the commercial revitalization of that corridor. Um, so during this process, I have to say that we were, when the Mahollins building went on sale, we were a little nervous because we didn't know um, what would happen with basically an entire block of this commercial district. Um, but uh, as great nosy neighbors, we watched out for anyone that was interested in purchasing. And we were actually connected to the team prior to their purchase and discussing the vision of the historic Northside District and what we'd hoped to, to come from that. Throughout that point, they've been very transparent. They've been um, meeting with us regularly. They've been addressing community concerns. As mentioned by Councilman Flores, the, the major concern is the commerce parking lots. Not necessarily the parking lots we understand, it's more that the rezoning would trigger potentially um, more commercial activity on the neighborhood side of things. However, we have reassured them because they understood, they said that they, we were told that they were okay with the parking lots as long as they stay parking lots. Um, and it's my understanding of working with city staff that we've been able to reassure them that in a planned development, no changes can be made without going back to uh, zoning and council. So if that changes, that will trigger that process again. Um, additionally, we've hosted a Zoning 101 workshop to help provide opportunities for the planning department, which brought out the majority of their team to the Rosemarine Theater to discuss and ask questions, not just about this, but about zoning in general, as we're a community learning about zoning and what that could mean for the commercial district. And uh, we've also, as mentioned um, by the, the development team, signed a commercial, uh, commercial I'm sorry, a community benefits agreement. Some of their actions were self-initiated. They have been wonderful of allowing us to get some of our businesses in there to look at the space. Our hope is to have leases signed um, by businesses that are locally owned, but that are also celebrating the culture of the neighborhood. Um, and I commend Theron for continuing to struggle to say panaderia, um, but he still does it. And so I'm proud of him. Um, and so, that is about it. They're also donating um, and hoping to commission local artists, make donations to, to the local um, high school scholarship fund. And really, they've extended um, just the gracious commitment that they want to become a part of the community. So thank you so very much. Thank you, Annette. Questions from council? Councilman Flores, you're good. Thank you, Annette. Our next speaker is Richard Perez. Is Richard here? We have him online, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Perez. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Richard Perez, long-term resident of the historic Marine neighborhood on 1400 North Commerce Street. I'm here today standing in solidarity with 22 signed petition neighbors, also the Northside Neighborhood Association and Fort Worth Environmental Coalition of Communities. We support the retention of the B2 family residential zoning in our community. Our concern is only track two of this zoning case. We support the developers in their track one on commercial Main Street, and we wish them well. We ask that the city council and the developers refrain from requesting or rolling back any residential uh, zoning in our neighborhood. We're concerned of a ripple effect that a planned development zone commercial could have on our neighborhood, leading to the destruction or of our neighborhood homes and displacement. An example of a rollback of our protective resi residential zoning is the Quick Trip gas station store now in our neighborhood that was initially opposed due to increased traffic concerns. The traffic did increase, noise increased, and homeless traffic was re reintroduced to our neighborhood. And to add, there are now idling semi trucks parking in our neighborhood behind the Quick Trip. I've had a few Fort Worth and interested development folks trying to upsell, upsell me on the PD zones lately, but from our perspective, those PD zones are stepping stones and stealthy ways to remove our protective residential zoning. We don't want any more PD zones in our neighborhood per se, and we ask that the proposed parking lot in this case be allowed with the current 
B2 family zoning with allowances for a renewing permit for their dumpster. Recently, I've learned there seems to also be a PD neighborhood option available as well with allowances for parking and dumpster. This could be a consideration. I think we all could agree on if it has to be a PD. But furthermore, there are three current parking lots in the neighborhood zone residential as good faith measure agreements between the owners and the residents. Um, we asked for a similar zoning in this case once again. Our neighborhood has experienced growth in home remodels and new builds, and we're an older neighborhood and considered one of the oldest, if not uh, the oldest, uh, Latino neighborhood in Fort Worth. Your decision today supports a true cultural segment of legacy families and their homes in our city, or it further unravels it. And recently, it's been said that in this city council that any bad zoning decisions made before their time take time to fix. I think now is the time to get this one right. So please vote to preserve our historic marine neighborhood associ uh, our neighborhood by retaining our residential zoning in this case. Thank you. Our next speaker is Gladys Guerrera. By Gladys? phone as well. Hello. Go ahead. Hi, this is Gladys. Um, so can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to start with that. Uh, I'm a resident of the Northside neighborhood, um, not particularly Marine Park area, but um, we're, we're within the same vicinity. I just wanted to make claim that there's a lot of history to this neighborhood. Um, one in particular, 1991, the reporter Deborah Ferguson, which is now with the NBC5, reported on a similar concern for residents for this community, specifically for Marine Park. She reported that there was an estimated 90 homes that are in the historic area that were rezoned in 1940 to be light industrial. Those like that rezoning directly impacted the residents, you know, with restrictions of home improvement and environmental impacts to those living in that area. That person that led that effort was Albert Perez, which is actually the dad of Richard Perez that you just spoke, you heard from. We're, we are opposed to track two. Um, like Richard said, there's 22 signed petitions within the 300 foot radius of the property. And in this case, Albert Perez has all the re was advocating for the rezone of the residents to be I know that there was mentioned that PD commercial was the lowest form of re reclassification. Um, our understanding from zoning is that you could, you know, consider with the approval of council is that it could be put to residential B plus parking with dumpster. Again, that's I've always been the concern from the beginning. We do not, we're not trying to impose the progress for the community for the commercial property, but we also want to have protection for our residents. There's a long standing history there, and this just incites more commercial growth and elimination of historical homes. This is eliminating the history of the, of the doctor's area. Thank you so much. Councilmember Flores, that's the conclusion of our speakers on this item. Thank you, Mayor. And I appreciate everyone coming to uh, speak today and also, more importantly, everyone that's been involved in the continued outreach. Back in May, I continued this case uh, primarily for the purpose of continued outreach, but also more effective outreach. I communicated that to the developers and their representatives and also to the Chamber of Commerce and the historic Northside District. And that has occurred. There's been meaningful outreach, and by that I mean this, including not just the zoning you know, meeting that we had at Office of Rosa, but also door-to-door, -door, one -on one-on-one outreach. And that has happened, I have verified that, I appreciate it, several of the residents have contacted me directly and have expressed their support of this project. And again, the majority of the residents there in historic uh, Marine do support it. I do wanna say something, there is a master plan, I've alluded to this before, that was crafted a few years ago at the time before I was a council member, I was a participant and so was uh, Richard Perez's uh, late father, Albert Perez. That master plan for the historic marine uh, area also included that corridor, and it had measures of preservation of that neighborhood in mind already. This has been done. It's a great confluence of things and an opportunity the way I see it. You have the neighborhood improvement plan for the historic marine park, I mean, I'm sorry, historic marine community there, Right, that's gonna be very helpful. As Annette alluded to, you have the Main Street America project also there. 
and that's going to help uplift this area, and we're creating opportunity for this area. It's important to also recognize at the very basic level, this is a down zoning. It's J industrial. If nothing happens here, if this developer doesn't take the opportunity to redevelop it to MU, a mixed use approach, well, what's the possible future? Another industrial use? I think that's more of a negative impact on that neighborhood, right? The opportunities that we have to improve the area in terms of safety, addressing the ongoing homeless issue, again, these must be seized now. I live in that area, I've lived in this area all my life. I would not do anything to endanger this area or put anything negative that could potentially impact it. This is a good opportunity, you know, I think. Again, all these portions, you know, of this development have good potential to improve the area while still preserving that residential. And again, I alluded to the precedent of those empty lots becoming parking lots several years before. We're trying to offload parking from the residential streets. That was an issue years ago. And with this approach, that is an effective solution. Keep in mind, the developer is also pursuing, you know, a historic designation. Now, not get too far in the weeds, but if they get it when they get it, that removes the parking requirement. That would not be a good thing. I communicated this to both the Northside Neighborhood Association and to Mr. Perez. They were aware. I think that this is a better approach to keep the parking of this redevelopment off those neighborhood streets. And so just keep in mind, you know, um, when I think about this, I think about a quote, nothing results from human progress that is achieved with unanimous consent, right? I've listened to both sides, you know, of, of the equation here with folks, not sure if they're gonna support it, folks that are against it and folks that are for it. The majority of the residents that I've spoken to are for it. Now I do wanna address this petition. I don't know if anyone from zoning is here. Yeah. Uh, whoever can, can tell me about this petition because this is the first I've heard about it. Council member, um, this is the first that we're aware of a petition as well. Okay, let me just remind everyone involved. Getting a petition is fine, but the petition has to have some structure to it. When council looks at a petition, it's not just a collection of signatures. What we need to know are the addresses of those signing on. We need to know, uh, you know, in, in printed form, not just a signature. And it has to be submitted in a timely fashion. During all this outreach, that has never occurred. If this is late breaking, I understand that. But again, that ship has sailed. The majority of the residents of the historic marine area support this. And those are the ones that are most impacted, and therefore that's who I'm going to listen to very intently. So with that, I make a motion to approve this uh, zoning case. We've got a motion and a second. Um, let me just close by saying how fortunate both your north side, your historic marine, and the stockyards are to be represented by Councilmember Flores. You're incredibly thoughtful. Every zoning case is difficult right now in your area because there's so much excitement around Council District 2. And I think you got to demonstrate that today of how thoughtful he is and careful to consider all parties. And I think your developers were probably made better because of it too, because he had so much attention to detail. So enthusiastic support of Council Member Flores. Council, you can vote. Motion carries. Next item is ZC-24-029. We have no speakers on this item. Council, can entertain a motion. Motion a second, please vote. Motion carries. Next item is ZC-24-035. No speakers on this item, Councilman Martinez. Um, so staff and both zoning commission voted to deny this, so I'm mo moved to deny. Second. Motion a second, please vote.
Motion carries. Next item is ZC-24-036. Mayor Pro Tem Bivens, we do have one speaker on this item, Jeremy Smith, only if there's opposition. To my knowledge, there is none. I'll turn the floor to you first. You tried to do it this way. Okay. There it goes. Did it work? Yeah, Technology. okay. The Zoning Commission recommended denial in this case, but the property owner is here. And so, Mr. Smith, uh, it's my intent not to uphold the denial provided uh, you are okay with this amendment that I want to make from the floor. And the amendment reads, you know, I'll amend this zoning change to A5 single family with no more than five homes on the property giving us a 50-foot lot width. Is that okay with you? Okay. And so with that, I move for, for approval. Oh. And Mr. Smith, I want to thank you for coming. You never know when anybody can come in and sign up to oppose what you're trying to do. And so I know you were meeting with Babers Manor, that project, but thanks for being here and thanks for what you're doing in Stop 6. Yeah. Go to again, Jared. You're good. Motion carries. And Jeremy, just for your knowledge, we are going to close today's meeting later on in Coach Robert Hughes' honor. And since you played with him, maybe you want to stick around for that. Just letting you know. Next item is ZC-24-038. Councilmember uh, Council Hill. I think we have one speaker. Oh, we do. It's only for the opposition. We don't have any. So they're all three speakers. Well, I guess I can ask Elaine Torres. Are you here to speak no matter we have, what? We have her online. Okay, right? great. Ms. Torres? Uh, good afternoon. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon, Council. Uh, I am Elaine Torres. I'm the Vice President of Land Development for LGI Homes. Uh, first, I apologize for not being able to be there in person, uh, but I am really just here to answer any questions that may come up. This passed really easily through uh, planning and zoning. Uh, we are asking to rezone a uh, multifamily uh, tract. It's a five-acre tract, and zone it to um, E neighborhood commercial. Thank you. Councilmember Hill. Ms. Torres, do you all have a plan yet for the site? Yes, uh, we have, um, I believe uh, staff had, it was in the packet. It is a basic site plan. It's just a suggested site plan. Um, nothing has been designed as of, as of right now. Okay, thank you. Um, with that, I just move to approve. Motion a second, Council. Please vote. Motion carries. Next item is ZC-24-045. No speakers on this item, Council Member Crane. Yeah, Ma Mayor, I've been alerted by staff. The developer would like to pull this, so I'm going to move to continue this case to August 13th. Second, my Councilmember Larsdorf, please vote. Motion carries. Next item is ZC-24-048. Councilmember Nettles. We do have one speaker on this item. Sorry about that. Aaron Seagal. Okay. Councilmember Nettles, I'll turn to you first. Move for approval. Motion a second, please vote. Thank you. Motion carries. Next item is ZC-24-052. And Councilor Nettles, we do have one speaker on this item, Adrian Smith. So this particular plot of land, we know that it is part of the Renaissance Square development. 
and it's been online for some years now. However, I wanted to speak to zoning. We know that zoning, we had a zoning commission, zoning board. They make their recommendations, whether for or against an applicant's uh, request. But you all, as the council, had a discretion to override it. And we've witnessed you all override it, override the zoning commission, whether there's approval or denial. And sometimes it's against the, your constituents' uh, desires, and sometimes it's for your constituents' desires. But however, we know that when it comes to developers, developers should never be above your constituents, first and foremost. These children that sat here today, do you think those children elected any of you? No, because they're not at the age of I'm electing sorry, anyone. I'm going to interrupt. Point of order. Can we pause this time? Um, this sign is in Jermaine. Uh, sustained. Council Member Adrian, if you want to keep going on this particular issue. So, like I said, this particular plot of land, because I know that a lot of you say that you hear from your constituents as it relates to a denial or approval of particular zoning cases. So, Mr. Nettles, have you heard from anyone as it relates to this particular uh, zoning uh, case? Because I know that, is my mic on? We have a tendency to put on when the camera's on, but I know that. Yes, I can actually answer a lot of you all, that question on. for you. Okay. You can you can you can answer that when I get through speaking, sir. Well, here we no, go. actually, you're yeah, council you're member. I mean, yeah. Adrian, you can't you cannot be rude. You have no may, limits. May now, you, time? Your time has stopped because you have no ability at any point during your you have no decorum. Every time you come here, it is some nonsensical argument that no one can follow. And here again, it's one more time. So I think I'm going to conclude your time and let you go home. Good luck. And thank you, uh, Mayor, uh, for that. And so thank you, Belinda, for uh, meeting with me the other day. We're going to continue this case until August uh, the 13th, because uh, I have heard from the constituents of District 8 who actually wants to approve this. And so um, I also met with the developer, and we're all on one accord. So thank you. That's my motion. Motion and a second. Thank you, Councilmember Nettles. Please vote. Motion to continue passes. Next item will be MNC 24-0574-0575-070576 and 0577. I believe Councilmember Martinez has one motion for all four. Thank you. Councilmember Martinez, the floor is yours. Yes. Uh, so I move that the city, the Fort Worth City Council adopt the resolution authorizing use of the power of eminent domain to acquire the following 0.017 acres in permanent sewer facility easement at 616 East Arlington Avenue in the Hyde Park Edition, Block 4, Lot 76, Tarrant County, Texas, owned by Maria Flores Alvarez, Rose, Rosa Alvarez, Benita Alvarez, Leonor Alvarez, Santos Alvarez, Isabel Alva, Alvarez, Nicholas Alvarez, Alfredo Alvarez, Codogreda Alvarez, Roman, Maurillo Alvarez, Maria de Los Angeles Alvarez, Erlindo Alvarez, and Adelfa Alvarez. The land rights and subject properties are needed. Sanitary sewer rehabilitation contract, 100 project, a public use that will upgrade and repair the permanent sewer line facility. 0 0.004 acres in permanent sewer easement located at 2321 Emily Drive in the 40 Oaks Edition, Block 1, Lot 5, Tarrant County, Texas and owned by Isabel Flores and, and Arcelia Flores, 0 0.005 acres in permanent sewer facility easement at 2329 Emily Drive in the 40 Oaks Edition, Block 1, Lot 6, Tarrant County, Texas, and owned by J. Isabel Flores and Maria A. Flores, and 0 0.006 acres in permanent sewer facility easement at 2317 Emily Drive in 40 Oaks Edition, Block 1, Lot 4, Tarrant County, Texas, from real property owner owned by George Adriel Barraza Herrera and Maria La Luz Marin Silva. The land rights in these properties are needed for the Sanitary Sewer Rehabilitation Contract 90 Part 2 project, a public use proposed future easement that will repair damaged sewer lines, allow better flow within the sewer pipes and help prevent sewer backups between Station 2 and 17 and Station 2 and 77 on Lot 
3824, the property interest to be acquired are described by meets and bounds and depicted by survey exhibits attached to the mayor and council communications. This motion indicates that the first record vote applies to all units of property to be condemned and the minutes shall reflect that the first vote applies to all of these units. Second. Motion a second, please vote. Yeah. Motion carries. Next item is MNC 24-0580. Councilmember Crane. Yes, uh, Mayor. I move that the Fort Worth City Council adopt the resolution authorizing the use of power of eminent domain to acquire 0.65 acres in fee simple from real property owned by Patricia Miller, deceased. The property interest is needed for the Bomberspur Trail project to construct a 12-foot wide shared use Bomberspur Trail from Calmont Avenue to West Vickery Boulevard. The property is located at 4350 Southwest Boulevard in the Franklin S. Perry Survey, abstract number 1226, Tarrant County, Texas. The property interest is to be acquired as is described by meets and bounds and depicted by survey exhibits attached to this mayor and council communication. Second. Motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries. Next item is MNC 24-0550 with one correction being read into the record and that is the correct council district should be district two, not nine. Council, we have quite a few speakers on this item. Our first is Melissa Wade Hunter followed by Adrian Smith. was to speak in opposition, so am I in the correct order? Yes, ma'am, they're just in order here on the list. Okay. Ms. Hunter, you can continue. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Melissa Wade Hunter. I'm here speaking on behalf of the North Fort Worth so uh, Historical Society, started in 1976. And we, too, are very grateful to have Carlos Flores as the district council person for this area. He knows and he concern is concerned about the history and uh, of the area. Uh, we are concerned that we don't see the following in phase two, the historic pins, which is your first slide. These pins have a unique design that is described in this first, I'm sorry, it's not the pin itself, it's the description of the construction. There's, there are only uh, a few left of the original 2,600 pins. Uh, also on the bottom is uh, scale house A, is the only remaining scale house left. Scale house, it has a description of what a scale house was. It is an actual scale on ground level where cattle were loaded on and off to measure the cattle. The catwalk and the turnstile. The turnstile on the next slide is 121 years old. The catwalk is very special, as probably all of you have known and seen there. Without those, and these are the only ones left, without those, you have only have duplicated stuff. If the, histor if the existing historic pens are destroyed, so goes the unique, unique gate and hinge system that move cattle from one pen to another. These historic buildings, building blocks are the real working parts of the history which made Fort Worth. Visitors are thrilled to be able to see and walk around the pens and catwalk going through the turnstile. The ongoing deal ordeals for the stockyards that we have concerns for. We had a visitor center that won a beautification award from the Fort Worth Women's Club. 
That was the picture on the left with the green line. Now we have the front of the exchange line looks like that. That was a June 2024 picture taken. Um, we, I'm gonna try to get this fa through fast, so that's why I'm reading. The previous visitor center uh, was in a huge building, actually had restrooms, and now on the right, you see the existing visitor center that is for the millions of visitors that we're all talking about coming to this area. That's it on the right. So we are concerned about swift staircase present condition, which is the last. Plan doesn't show what uh, the developers know is historic. The historic plan pins are planned for destruction for even with the reprogrammed historic pins as well as the turnstile, scale house, and catwalk. Uh, Plans bring other questions. Where are the rodeo contestants going to take their uh, trailers for the rodeo? We have voiced concerns about neon installations on Thank highly you, Melissa. visible Thank you, Melissa. Sorry, streets. your time has concluded. Thank you. I have one paragraph. I'm sorry, I can't allow you to do that unless Councilmember Flores has a question for you. Uh, Melissa, thank you for appearing before us. Um, and I want to also thank, uh, you know, the North Fort Worth, uh, you know, Historical Society for meeting with me last week and you know hearing in in level of detail these things that you're also bringing up you know to the rest of council here uh, needless to say there is a lot of you know continued historic preservation that we have to do in the stockyards uh, when this project launched originally uh, you know with uh, mayor price and then council you know heading it and announcing that it would be here there were a lot of questions even then and there are questions now for phase two and those will be fleshed out as it comes through. Uh, you know, our valued partners, you know, Heritage and the Hickman family have committed, and I think they continue to recommit to historic preservation because that's what makes the core of the stockyards. Specific to the cattle pens, those cattle pens reside, I think, in totality in the historic district. Other features like the scale house, uh, the turnstile that we talked about when we met, you know, those are, you know, I've already talked to our historic preservation folks here on the side of the city going forward when these plans start coming together, they'll work with, uh, you know, the heritage group and their developers to make sure that all this is taken into account. But I just want to say, you know, even though you didn't finish your paragraph, you know, I read you and I've, and I've heard loud and clear what it is that you want us to pay attention to. And I'm glad you do support it. And just as a note, as I mentioned to you, uh, the visitor center, uh, we're looking at uh, relocating that into some available space, possibly there at the uh, Coliseum uh, ticket building. So it'll have a better home if we can make that work. But thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Adrian Smith. Adrian will be followed by Pam Minnick. Adrian, if we could stick on topic, your poster is not on topic. So if you want to stick, nope, 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 we're not going to do that. He can have it back. That's fine. That's great. Go ahead. Anything about the stockyard specifically? And before I begin my time, I want to say thank you to the city marshals for all that you do to maintain order in this, this place. Um, Mayor, when I come to this podium. Jermaine to the topic. I understand. I don't want you to go home, my position. but we'll go home. Oh, I'm going home regardless. Okay. So as it relates Great. to this, um, the historic south, uh, the historic stockyards, um, we know that you all are going to vote this particular agenda item through to the investors, uh, kudos. But, but my question is, how much is it going to cost, talking to you, Mayor, since you're the chair, how much is it going to cost the taxpayers uh, once it's all said and done. I'm not going to answer from the because, diet, so we've got uh, lots of speakers. Because you, through, you, know that, you know that these high dollar items typically uh, become a burden on people who make services possible in any particular city. So, you think about the historic south side. Stockyards. Stock, well, you know what? I'm going to get to that point. I know number five is getting tired of me, but so we have the historic stockyards. We have Gateway Park. We have the West 7th Entertainment District. When I think about these three entities, this is all I think about. Investment, investments, development, growth, and opportunities. Then we flip over to the opposite side. We have the historic south side. We have the southeast quarter. 
And then we have far west Fort Worth. When I think about these particular areas, I have disinvestment, despair, gross negligence, and adversity. So how are we able to one more time to, on this how are we able on to this item to on the money? stockyards? How are we always able to find money as it pertains to things that you know you I, I consider you all's pet projects, but we can't find money for anything else or anyone else. Your remarks are concluded. No. I okay. Keep going. Forty nine. Oh, good. That's 48. great. Forty eight. Point of order. Sustained. You're done. We're going to move on. Grisana consent agenda. Do you have any items pertaining to the stockyards item? You had 40 seconds left. Okay, go for it. So, again, One, the stockyards. Um, two. As it relates to the stockyards, to the investors, uh, could you all think about the people who are continuing to go without uh, necessary investment, growth, and development? Because there are people in this, there are individuals in this city who need opportunities to better their lives. So you ought to be off next month. So just Adrian, take time your time's to expired. Relax. Yeah, thank reset. you. Reset. Our next speaker is Pam Minnick, followed by Tim Love. Now this is a woman you should listen to if you'd like to. <clears throat> okay. Don't leave, Adrian, because we will have opportunities with, with jobs in the stockyards. I'm Pam Minnick uh, from the Fort Worth Stockyards, and 10 years ago, I stood before the city council and I made a promise that the Hickman family and the Majestic uh, developers would do a project that would make this city proud. Gina, you're the last man standing. You're the only one that was here in that city council, however. Um, uh, Mayor Price was there, Maddie was there, uh, Carlos figured uh, well and, uh, and Michael and some of the uh, form-based code that was uh, pr made it, put in place to make this uh, development what it has become. And I am proud of what it has become and I can honestly say promise fulfilled and I hope that you all feel the same way because it was a very careful restoration. Um, uh, Mayor Price at the time said that uh, abandon abandonment is not preservation, and these buildings would have been uh, crumbled down had they not been restored. And yes, there were some, some skeptics. Um, some of the business owners were afraid that, uh, that the, their business would be affected, and I can say they were right. Business has never been better not only in the stockyards, but throughout our city. And this city, Fort Worth, is the envy of, of the entire nation. And that is because of, of the leadership then and the leadership now. Um, so a lot of you are saying, just like Adrian says, what's in it for me? Well, what's in it for me, particularly in this phase two development, um, in addition to the success that it's brought, additional success that it's brought to Billy Bob's, is that for the last nearly two decades, I've served as president of Friends of the Fort Worth Herd, and that's the support group um, that provides the horses and tack and some of the other items uh, for the Fort Worth Herd. Many of you have seen the accommodations that we have for the herd existing now, and in this phase two development, there is a plan for the Fort Worth Herd, and that takes that into the future, and that's what's in it for me. So I wanna applaud each of you, not only for what you do on a daily basis for our city, but especially for your forward thinking, for your vision, uh, for the stockyards, for this phase two, and to continue, continue to see that we uh, support our Western heritage in Fort Worth, that people get a chance to see what we have and, and to see where we came from and where we're going. I know Gina and I have had a, many conversations about, um, about her dad and her love for the Fort Worth Stockyards, and I think we all have our special memories, and let's make those memories of the Fort Worth Stockyards continue. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Our next speaker is Tim Love, followed by Mayor Mike Moncrief. What's up, Council? Mayor? Hi. How are we doing today? Great. I have to say, y'all have an amazing amount of patience. I've witnessed every bit of it today, so thank you for that, and thank you for the opportunity to let me speak. Um, it's pretty easy for me to speak about the stock guards. I've 
I've been in business there for uh, 24 years as of last week. And um, I've seen many things happen in the stock yards, good, bad, and different. But as we all know, and, and we don't have to repeat very much, the last five years in particular have been really spectacular down in the north side. Uh, I've seen amazing growth uh, in my business, amazing growth in everybody else's business, and a site that people are jealous of all over the country. And as you all know, I travel a lot. I speak to a lot of people in different places. And when you see headlines that say, Fort Worth is the new Austin, and everybody talks about how cool Austin is. Well, we know we're cool now. And it's because of the development we have in the stockyards. And phase two um, is very important to me, uh, my team. I employ 600 people in Fort Worth, Texas, and we intend to employ 600 more uh, thanks to phase two. And not only that, we've seen some amazing brands come to the stockyards. And they come because of the... Uh, the group that we put together in the stockyards is a diverse, uh, outgoing, friendly, welcoming um, city within the city, frankly. And to uh, Heritage and the group that's put all that together, I'm forever thankful, and the city should be too. Uh, I work very hard. My team works very hard, and we work together in the stockyards to make these great things happen. And when you see something like Phase 2 come about, it's going to create an amazing amount of parking and not a big parking garage, it's going to be an ugly eyesore, it's going to be something that fits in the historical, historical district where you don't have to see a parking garage, we're going to bury the parking, so it still has that same feel when you walk around the streets, and the wandering streets, and the cool little shops, and the experimental things you're going to see in the stockyards in phase two, it's going to match what history already provided for us. Uh, I'm, I hope that everybody on the council can see what the investment is going to be, and how it continues forward, I think as Pam alluded to, she made a promise 10 years ago, and I promise you today, myself, we get this phase two going. Not only is the stockyards going to benefit and the city going to benefit, but it's going to be paid back in spades. So thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Tim. Our next speaker is Mike Moncrief, followed by Mayor Betsy Price. Mayor and Council, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, today. It's been a while since I've been in these chambers. Look forward to uh, your new digs and seeing what that's all about. I know y'all are excited too. But today um, I want to remind you of a, of a journey that began a while back. Eleven years ago, in the twilight of his life, Holt Hickman, on behalf of himself, Joe, Brenda, Brad, and the citizens of Fort Worth, stood before the city council right here in this room. And he said that Ed Roski and Craig Cavalier were the right partners, the right partners for all of us. We know today that Holton was right. The search for the right partners was every bit as successful as he told us it would be. And I have no doubt He's here, smiling down. Well, while we support another step forward with Ed and Craig, we do so standing on the shoulders of Holt and in the company of Brenda and Brad, who continue Holt's civic legacy and leadership. So congratulations to the entire Hickman family, to Ed Roski, to Craig Cavalier, and the Majestic team. And we must sincerely congratulate you, Mayor Parker, along with Council Member Flores, your partner in this effort, along with this entire city council and this great staff. You have a wonderful staff. They work their fanny off every single day to make us a better place. We owe them our gratitude. But you are continuing that partnership that Mayor Price and the council began over 10 years ago. Time passes quickly. And that partnership benefits the entire community. As I wound down my service at City Hall, I reflected and spoke about public-private partnerships right here in Fort Worth and Tarrant County. I realize that these partnerships are the foundation of much of our civic success. 
These partnerships span the history of the stockyards and the history of our city. They create jobs, diversify our economy, and bring civic pride. So let today stand as a continuation of Fort Worth's commitment to those public-private partnerships. That's our secret weapon, which is no longer our secret, but it works. <laughs> and the benefits speak for themselves. God bless you and God bless our city. Good Thank to be you, back. Mayor. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mayor Betsy Price, followed by Ethan Wayne. Howdy. Howdy. You knew I was going <laughs> to say that, Maddie. I did. It's so nice to see you all, and I have to tell you, it's pretty fun being on this side of the table. <laughs> you know, this is the 10th year of our 380 agreement and our partnership with the Majestic Heritage Group. David Cook will remember this as well as anyone because it was David's first meeting. We started at 7 and adjourned at 1, 1 a.m. A marathon meeting because many in this community were not sure that they wanted the stockyards touched. Although for us, people were really worried, but we knew it was the right thing because we could not let the stockyards be demolitioned by neglect. And that's where we were headed. I grew up in the stockyards. My grandparents sold cattle there. As a little kid, I remember sitting on my grandfather's lap. And I remember going back and riding horseback at the North Side Rodeo. It's an incredible place. And this partnership has done wonderful things. You won't see demolition by neglect as a result of that first 380. You see major success and major jobs that have been created. A great tourist attraction a destination for everyone. In fact, nine million visitors went through the stockyards last year alone. It's a point of pride worldwide that Fort Worth flexes. Most importantly, it's brought so many jobs and so much development. Carlos, you were there from the moment that Sal appointed you to the committee. Thank you. Thank you all for taking this next leap. Thank you to our partners, the Holtman, the Hickman, Majestic Group waited a long time. We put tight controls on them with form-based code, and they had to wait three years to start their project after it was approved because it took so long to get through form-based code. But look where they are now. Five years after they started Hotel Drover and the development at Mule Alley, look at what it's become. They took over management of the Coliseum and what do we have there now but something every night and people really live up to it. The next few years will be an incredible jump in where the stockyards go. We're well aware and you as council member and mayors are well aware that the historic significance must stay. I don't think they need to worry. I think we're in great hands. I wanna thank you all for putting your trust in this group and in the city to move this project. We took a giant leap of faith with our partners. Now it's your turn as the new council to take that giant leap of faith on the next great journey for the North Side. Thank you for your service, it's not easy. And thank you to city staff led by David for all that you've done. I look forward to working with you. Thanks. Thank you, Betsy. <clears throat> Our next speaker is Ethan Wayne. Ethan, I do hope you'll introduce yourself to those that may sure, not know. Sure, sure, okay. Mayor. Of course I will. Mayor, City Council, my name is Ethan Wayne, and I manage John Wayne Enterprises and the John Wayne Cancer Foundation. A few years ago, we were traveling a small John Wayne exhibit around the country looking for a permanent home. Uh, it's called John Wayne and American Experience. We looked in Orange County, California. We looked in Hollywood. Uh, Las Vegas, Branson, Nashville, etc., looking for a family-friendly, multi-generational location with the broad demographic. Also, and maybe most important, a location that shared and embodied the same value set and character traits that my father portrayed in his life and on screen. In other words, our uniquely American values and character. And it was about that time 
that Patrick Gotch from the Cowboy Channel pulled me aside and said, I want to introduce you to somebody named Craig Cavalier. He has a vision for the Fort Worth stockyards, and I think it may be the perfect place for you to bring John Wayne. So we flew down, met with Craig. He showed us his vision for the stockyards, and uh, with that vision and his energy, we felt this would be the right place to bring our father and his story. Uh, we're so grateful that you, Council, supported that initial vision for the stockyards because now we have a place to share John Wayne with the world. And I would respectfully ask that you consider to support the good work and vision of Mr. Cavalier, Kayla, the Hickman family, and others uh, to preserve not only the history and heritage of the stockyards itself, but of our own Western culture. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wayne. Councilmember Flores, that is the conclusion of our speakers. I'll turn the dais over to you. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks everybody that's come to speak on this. Really appreciate uh, you being here because it demonstrates how important, you know, what is being proposed is to Fort Worth. You know, I want to say this. Uh, you know, Pam and Mayor Mike, they spoke about commitments and partnerships. Those two really distinguish Fort Worth and how we do things here and to what level of success we're able to do it. Uh, in supporting phase two are valued partners, and this city are recommitting themselves to ensuring that our history is interwoven with our bright future. Uh, Mayor Betsy mentioned also that phase one validated that vision from 10 years ago, and there were plenty of questions there, a lot of consternation, but you know we plowed through it, and that vision was validated and proven. And it also went to prove, most importantly, that historic preservation and redevelopment can occur, not just coexist, but can occur together and live together to maximum benefit. And that's what Melissa, I think, that's where her heart of hearts are, right? Preserving that history, because without that history, what do we have in the stockyards? So I think it's in everybody's interest here, no one would disagree, that we have to continue to do that because the job's not over. So uh, I'm looking very forward to that. And you know, also from the economic side of things, you know, Tim, you mentioned uh, how important it is to the economy, the local economy. You employ a lot of folks and there are more coming. We have US Energy coming into the stockyards too on a separate vein, and that's gonna bring 60 jobs. So it's all building up. And this is a very good thing for Fort Worth. So the city will benefit, you know, through that increased uh, tax, you know, revenue. The public partner partnerships will ensure that our future uh, is sound economically, right? The Coliseum will benefit from this. The Fort Worth Herd will benefit from this. And again, that economic impact. So keep in mind that there's more to the stockyards than just, you know, what you may read about in the paper there's a lot of substantive things that are happening, a lot of things that we can be very proud of. And me as a council member, uh, where the Stockyards is located, you know, I'm very proud to be in this position to see this through. It's once in a lifetime, and uh, the best is yet to come. So you know, with that, you know, I'm ready to approve. Got a motion and a second on the floor. Mayor Pretend Bivens. I have to share, Pam, you took away, I was gonna go there about our talks because I know the last time we talked about this, people may have been confused about my support. But uh, I didn't know Mr. Wayne, but last weekend I watched my darling Clementine. This week I'll be watching True Grit. For those, for those it's already planned. But I, I am a child of the packing house. And I can tell you Fort Worth has always been a land of opportunity. You know, where but a job at Armour Packing House could a man who moved to Fort Worth with 73 cents in his pocket get employment and pay cash for his daughter's education? The other day my mom was looking at my jewelry box and she saw something I had hidden. I didn't want her to know I had it. But I have my dad's Armour safety pin. And I stole it from her. <laughs> And it's going to be a lapel bit or whatever. And she let me keep it. But I also have my uncle's belt buckle from Swift. You know, that, that land is who Fort Worth is. And so I took mom a couple of months ago to show her 
what was happening because she'd get up at four o'clock in the morning, we had one car, drive there to work, then come back home. And she couldn't believe all that had, had been taking place. And so this is very special to me. I will always remember Holt rolling up on me in that wheelchair. And he paused there until we had our eye contact and he knew my support was there. I remember the lunches we had at the Omni. There's so much to be, to be had from this historic boat. And in closing, I will tell you, Alan recently brought the president of Kosovo here. And so he pulled me in on that visit because he couldn't think of anywhere to take her. I took her to Bell Helicopter because I figured, okay, you know, you, you ought to want to know about defense. And she had a grand time there. Uh, but then she went to the stockyards. I think she forgot she was on official duty. <laughs> she was taking selfies and having, I mean, she really just threw the whole schedule to, to hell because she had such a ball at the stockyards. And, and these are just random thoughts, but I can have random thoughts because I've been here longer than anybody. And I'm old, so I get a chance to say what I want to say. But Betsy and Mike, I'll tell you this. You all talk about being out there watching us. These new people are very different. And when I visit around the, around the country and they talk about the lack of civility, I said, well, I'm now a member of a council where these new people heckle back. And so they just, they just don't sit here and, and take it. And I enjoy every minute of it. I really, really do. Mayor, I know Eric Johnson wants some boots. What I have told people is, charge him more. <laughs> charge him more. I think they get theirs from Waco. And so you know, he, he asked me about my boots. I didn't tell him much. I just thought, I'd get back with you. But since you've had a conversation, just make sure he pays. OK, okay. no problem. So no problem. those are just thoughts that I have just from being a child of the packing houses. And I'm just so glad that I, I'm able to drive that area and remember my childhood. Because in so many cities, whoever or wherever you're from, it's gone, but not us in Fort Worth. And that's what makes my city unique. And thank you for all you do and continue to do. And Mike and Betsy, I know you wish you were back here. <laughs> Just real weird these days. Thank you. Those are my rambling thoughts. And of course, I support this. Thank you, Mayor Pratim. In closing, I think I'll speak to who's not here, and that is a room full and people outside of opposition, because every other vote we've taken to get to this point has been incredibly contentious. Um, all with t-shirts and other posters and Facebook pages. And I really just think it's a testament, not to just this dais, the history of the council before us and Mayor Price and Mayor Moncrief, um, but all those of you that took the time to come today because it was not easy to get to this place. And I think you're just getting started. It's quite exciting. And I think a private-public partnership, to Mayor Mike's point, is something we should all be very proud of. So I just want to thank this council for partnering with Mayor uh, with Council Member Flores um, to get to this place because I know it's not been easy and a tremendous amount of your time is taken up. And I'd be also remiss if I didn't thank Robert Stearns and Michael Henning and his entire team because this was a very complicated deal to get to. And we appreciate you. You've been with this entire project for the entire duration, Robert. So congratulations as well. I know you're excited to see it come to life. With that, Council, I think we have a motion and a second, and we can vote. Motion carries. Mayor, that concludes all of the action items. Thank you. Um, I may ask Mayor Mike and Mayor Betsy just held on before we close the meeting. Today we close the meeting in honor of a very special man who once nicknamed the Mayor of Stop Six and one of the most significant figures in the history of Fort Worth, Coach Robert Hughes, who passed away on June 11th, age 96. Coach Hughes' impact extended far beyond the court, shaping countless lives as a coach, mentor, father figure, and pillar of this community. The greatest testament to his character is the lasting influence he has on those he mentored, advocated for, and motivated throughout his lifetime. As the winningest coach in high school basketball history, Coach Hughes not only leaves behind an incredible legacy in this sport of basketball and at Dunbar High, but across the entire Fort Worth community. Coach Hughes is survived by his daughters, Reverend Carly Hughes, Robin Lee Hughes, and son Robert Hughes. 
My prayers and all of our prayers are with his family, his loved ones, and all those who were touched by his light as they remember and celebrate his life. And with that, meeting is adjourned. Thank you.